hot comic book movie news Shooting up your butthole The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, by God, it's Nick Mason. James, I'm here and I'm camera ready. Are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we were going to film that thing, weren't I put, we? I put a little jumper on. You did on. put a little jumper little on. Jumper, my little, my little. Um, I'm doing. A, I'm singing a little song to Bruce Wayne in <laughs> in in Norway or whatever. Oh, very good. You know, in Justice League. That's a great. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a great callback to one of the versions of Justice League. Isn't it though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Are you, well, should we do that up top? We, we should, should do that up top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we talk movies and comics. Did I mention all that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'll just quickly say that's the part topics. of the intro that your brain breezes. Yeah, through. yeah, yeah. You know how like when you're driving and and you're like have I ever been looking at the road <laughs> yeah or you get somewhere and you're like what happened to all the space in between because I'm pretty sure I drove through it yeah and I mean, through I that bus have. shelter did I just exist just now yeah right <laughs> but your brain your yeah. brain cuts it out I guess yeah the minute before I die that's all going to come rushing back. <laughs> not 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 beautiful family <laughs> memories just all the empty space where I was driving <laughs> oh there's a there's a petrol station are you going from like your couch to the toilet to the fridge and back. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, anyway. Yeah, my precious family memories. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, 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 you're good. Uh, so if you do want to jump ahead, uh, you, we're talking about the new James Bond. We're going to be getting into the Madam Web project, oh. Ghostbusters f- 5? Hang on. Including yes, the reboot. wait. Yes, and it's then there's fine. the video games. Yeah, 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 which is technically Ghostbusters three when you think about it. No, it's not, and it's not a good game. <laughs> Star Wars stuff. Your antipathy for Ghostbusters. <laughs> I like how it even extends to a video game you played for a bit once. I didn't like it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, uh, SDCC Comic Con, of course, oh. coming up this year. Big news, big presences, uh, and then we've got a Weekly Planet hot scoop. Oh, do we? Yeah, before getting into Do I know about this? Uh, no, you actually don't. Whoa. I'll tell you on the Would podcast. Would you say it's a hot scoop or a shot of poop? Yeah, definitely. It's, oh, my God. And, if anybody's and you were be subjecting yourself to this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's the way, that's the rules. <laughs> sure is. I don't make the rules. You made that rule, and no, that's the rule now. No, I don't make the rules. I don't know where the rules came from. So I from. can cancel the rule? No, because <laughs> you don't make the rules, and I don't make the rules. Who's right? making these rules? Don't know, man. Don't know either. Anyways, we've got a bit of um, news, I guess. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, it's not good news, I guess, for for people. It's good news for us. <laughs> well, it's good news for us, and it's good news uh, for the fine folks yep. that all work for Planet Broadcasting slash the That's Weekly right. Planet Industries. Not a real company. No, um, no, it is. <laughs> it's a company. We have a company. It's not called that though. No, it's called Big Time Good Times. Hello, everybody. <laughs> G- give a thumbs up. Did you did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's true. Uh, anyway, okay. go on. No wonder the tax department can't find it. <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, starting in August, in fact, for the month of August, yeah. uh, we are taking a month off. Yes. So, and 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 you might be out there thinking, but you guys don't do anything. Yeah, what are you and you're absolutely about? right. Uh, and t- and I, I used to be like you. I also used to think that. I used to think that how this whole situation worked is I showed up yep. late, and then I just spoke some nonsense into a microphone, and then sometime later. Mm-hmm. It went through like some internet tubes and it came out as like fully produced videos and podcasts. Yeah, that's right. But turns out there's a whole team that does that. Yes. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, we've got uh, of course, Ben mm-hmm. and Matt and Lawrence. Mm-hmm. They're doing videos. We've got Rob Collings mm-hmm. who edits this podcast, who edits a bunch of videos, who handles all the social media. We've got all our admins yes. uh, for the for the Facebook groups and so on and so forth. Exactly. Uh, and uh, they, they've they been working in many cases for literally years without a break. Yeah, that's right. So we decided we'd give everybody a break mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take a month off. But folks, yes, don't think you're going to be left empty handed. You're going to be mostly left empty handed. Handed. Mostly left empty-handed. So the Weekly Planet is going to go on hiatus for one month. Yep. Uh, the Mr. Sunday Movies videos yep, are going on hiatus for one month. I might set some like Caravan of Garbage compilations up Yes. as long as I don't have to. Because my plan is to not touch literally anything, mm. to not get into a fight on Twitter. <laughs> not get into not... a fight with your wife. <laughs> no, that might happen. Okay. Oh, that's another thing. Claire does a lot of stuff also. That's Claire, very true, yeah. This podcast and she well, also, yeah. she's been raising your kids for several years without a break, and she's like, I'm going to take a month off from that. <laughs> we're just going to let them roam free. Yeah. But what we're going to do, uh, two things. One, we're going to record a bunch of stuff for BigSandwich.co. Yep. So That's if, you, if, you are, if you're part of that service, you will get uh, uh, an episode a week as per usual. Yes. But, of course, we're like, well, we don't want to leave people uh, just, on the, just on the regular feed empty-handed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, BigSandwich.co yep. content. We're going to take it out 
of the Big Sandwich Vault, yep. which is like the which which is as unto the Disney Vault, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we're going to take that and we're going to put it on the regular feed. Yeah, uh, so like you, at roughly the same time, there'll be a different thing every week. Yeah, when the Weekly Planet goes up, that's the plan. maybe even a few <laughs> things a week. No, let's not let's not go crazy. <laughs> okay, right. I'm tired. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, well, that's all going to be released. Yeah. So, uh, so if you if you're missing us, you won't have to because we'll be right there. That's right. But we'll we will literally be on break. And uh, look, we I know we normally take like a break in December, but we we don't really break. Really, I guess we still kind of work through. And last December, my family and I got COVID, so we didn't get a proper break then. And since since I've been because I started this when I was a teacher, mm-hmm. and you also have a full time job outside. I'm also of a this. teacher. He's also a teacher and a tram driver and a man of the world, karate instructor, karate instructor. That is mm-hmm. true. Uh, then, so like, I haven't just taken a break for like 10 years, maybe. Right. So just to like literally put everything down, uh, would be really nice. And don't so don't the, put the dogs down. No, I have to. I'm taking a break, okay. Mason. <laughs> okay. And then I'll get new dogs in September. Nice, good call. So yeah. And the plan is also for all of those people who, that, that, so this includes like the planet broadcasting great mates. This includes all the social media accounts. All of that is going to stop. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that, that we don't control that, that will run like the weekly planet reddit will run there's a bunch of other great mates groups that will that will also run but but not the main stuff and everybody is also getting paid so that's the other reason we're <laughs> that's cool. right every one of the listeners <laughs> is getting paid that's it so that's why we're also uh keeping big sandwich open as well because that can bring in some revenue and everybody will still get money so mm. everybody's taking a break and a holiday or, or they'll work on whatever they want to work on it's totally up to them it's very true. my plan is to work through though i'm going to be doing oh this yeah podcast. great terrific <laughs> what's your plan you're gonna yeah, just it? gonna we'll just record more stuff i guess and never stop working yeah, yeah. so we yeah it's just kind of I, I don't know i just feel like you know it'd be nice to have a break i don't feel burnt out i feel pretty good mm-hmm. but i but i also recognize that that's you know, you just should probably take a break. Every Everybody behind the scenes has certainly earned a break. I yeah. tell you that much. So, uh, yeah, completely agree. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about that, um, I guess you can ask us. Yeah, <laughs> if, you if, you th- if you think we should disappear for longer, let yeah, us know. Tell us how long. But we won't. <laughs> we will be back. Out of spite, we'll be back. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but thank you. Um, People who I assume would be mostly understanding of this. I'm not one of these hustle and grind culture gentlemen, Mason. Mm. Those guys can all get fucked. And uh, yeah, so that's how that's where that's where it's at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Anything else? No, that's the whole thing. I think. Then let's talk about some James Bond news, Mason. Okay, this is via Deadline and Barbara Broccoli. <laughs> you might know from the Broccoli family. Yes, that's right. Did you know he got his nickname Cubby Broccoli from like the mob or something? Interesting, because yeah. he's Albert Broccoli, right? The yeah. late Albert Broccoli. I saw this uh, tweet from uh, Michaela Joff who says, the James Bond producer is named Barbara Broccoli. Ha <laughs> ha, what? How did I never notice that? She inherited Bond, uh, the Bond job from her dad, Cubby Broccoli. Ha <laughs> ha. He's got that. He got that name from whoever the... this person is. They're loving. They're loving I life. Like, I gotta just just imagine having those just those. Just just seeing the world for the first time with those eyes. <laughs> yeah. He got his name from his 1930s mob ties. Ha <laughs> ha. He may have killed the creator of the Three Stooges. Ha <laughs> ha. Wait, what? So I don't know whether that That's, that's a great true. point. That, that, look, that took a turn there, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the murder part. Yeah, actually. definitely. Anyways, Barbara Broccoli said uh, in regards to the new James Bond, nobody is in the running. Ooh. We're working out where to go with him. We're, taking, uh, we're talking that through. There isn't a script and we can't come up with one until we decide how we're going to approach the next film because, really, it's a reinvention of Bond. We're, we're reinventing who he is and that takes time. I'd say the fil- uh, that filming is at least two years away. Now, obviously, here, if, if there's any point where the internet's going to melt down, it's the point where she said this is a reinvention of Bond. We're going to reinvent like, him. It was like a game spot like Facebook posts, and it was okay. just like, what, they're going to make him woke? What, they're going to put him in a dress? What, <laughs> are they going to make him a giraffe? Or, you know, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe he'll be an attack helicopter. Mm. Look at me. I've thought of a, a thing, a I new mean, thing. First of all, that'd be freaking sick, obviously. <laughs> just just chopping around in his tuxedo, you know, <laughs> little bow tie on the Going front of the Going up to the bar, and yeah. it's just like, Sweeping all the glasses <laughs> off the counter, yeah. <laughs> Just cutting through all the patrons. About my titty sugar, daughter. Sorry, what? <laughs> Sorry, what, sir? What do you What do you want? Okay. Your rotors are spinning very fast, sir. I don't, you know? Uh, pretty good. But I think what they good. mean is we're, we're just They always go- reinvent it. Yeah, but, and then they also mean like, 
reinventing MI6 headquarters. Well, that's and true. That's They've what got they to have mean. a new steel it's and glass. It's just going to be a new look. What they mean is a new look and more brand yeah. connections. It's like, what's his new watch going to be? Mm. What's his new suit going to be? That's probably like, that's... true. But what if they, and I've, I've said this a million times, what if they did go back to the 60s? Yes. What would all those brand deals even look like now, though? Well, the 100, what they would do is like Amiga would release uh, – like a like a heritage version that of that I get, but what thing. about like cars and stuff? Like, oh. modern, what if he has to have a Heineken? Oh, that Heineken was around in the sixties. Yeah, but it's a different bottle. Mason. Aston Martin. Yeah, would, but it's a different Aston bottle. Martin would re-release. Mason. They James. They all do this now. They've built it in. Yeah. They would release like a. Uh, they, he would drive the DB5 and Aston Martin would release like a limited edition new version of the DB5. You sound ridiculous. A helicopter couldn't drive a car, <laughs> you <laughs> absolute <laughs> muppet. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's James Bond helicopter taking his driving test. What would that be like? <laughs> I don't know. So you would cut up all the leather he interior. Would cut, he would, it's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, the, I, that, I mean... I think the longer we do this, I don't think it's even the longer we do this podcast. It's just the older we get. Yeah. And the, the more we've seen all these versions over and over again, the more I think at least I want stuff that Hollywood would never do. Like I would love mm. to see, and I think I've mentioned this when we talked about No Time to Die, I would love to see that MI6 team do some missions post-Bond. Yeah. And just because I like, you know, the new 007 and you get Ana de Armas and you get mm. the support team, you get M and Q and Money Penny and all those guys and you have them, uh, you know. I was going to say Felix, but he died. He died, but you bring him back. Yeah, robot, fine. With robot bits. He's had robot legs before, hasn't he? He's in the, in the in comics, the comic books, he had, robot yeah, legs? In the comic book, he has like a, a robot leg and a robot arm. Yeah, yeah sick. Yeah. That's freaking sick, That's man. That's freaking sick, right? Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I would love to see that, but I, I, I suspect – the the polling and the the market research would say, oh well, they don't. People aren't going to watch that without Bond. But I yeah. think people should. But th- again, like that feels like something they'd more try as like a you know how they did Treadstone, the TV, yeah, like TV series, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Treadstone, the TV series you won't watch. Yeah, that was the tagline. Treadstone. Do you know what that means? You don't. <laughs> oh well, I guess we're cancelling it then. Yeah, mm. we should have called it Bourne Stone. <laughs> or <it> Jason Bourneville. <laughs> you know, yeah. born in wherever he's from, the USA. I think you're right. <laughs> but he has multiple passports. Jason obviously. Bourne in the USA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I would love to see that. To, I'm, but uh, well, like, because we've also seemingly reached the point of like, nobody is going to release a thing and just go, you, the audience, don't know what you want. Mm. We have faith in this. We'll tell you what you want and it's this thing. Yeah. Like, I think it could do well, but I think there's, they're, they're too focused on saying, okay, well, the market research says they only love Daniel Craig as James Bond yeah. and they hate everything else and they hate it. They're going to hate a new woke version. They're going to hate the version where he's a helicopter, even yeah. though it's freaking sick. The and version, they, and the version and, you're right. The yeah. version they pick will have, like, even if it is a shot in the dark at something, it will be a calculated risk. Correct. Yeah. And that's fun. It is fun, I think. Yeah. We're all having fun. What if he was too woke though, Mason? I saw things like, what, he's not even going to kiss a woman because he has to ask permission? Well, yeah, he should. Like that's 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 good. <laughs> you shouldn't just grab people and kiss them. You shouldn't, them. yes. You should <laughs> wait for a signal of some kind. That's right. Yeah. Like a, I don't know, like a big buzzing sign? Yeah, like a big buzzing sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, excellent. Oh, one vegan martini, please. Oh, he would, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. He would, absolutely would. Yeah. One macrobiotic vegan martini. Let's let's be real. Martini. With Yakult in it. <laughs> it's filled with Yakult. <laughs> Do Americans thing. have Yakult? I don't know. I don't know. It's a bad, that'd be a brand deal. Though, yeah, that'd be a brand deal. Yeah. They got $200 million from Yakult. <laughs> so it has to be Yakult presents James Bond 007. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine all the ads. Oh, man. I feel like I'm going to shit myself. I'll have this year, Colt. My gut James Bond's flora, got IBS now. My gut flora and forte is, is mm. all out of whack. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, also, martinis, they're not good. It's not a good drink. Who's drinking martinis? Also, if you go up and order a martini, you look like a loser. Oh, you think I so? I feel like it's like, oh, you do it. Oh, you think you're James Bond with your martini. Mm. Fucking idiot. <laughs> anyway, especially if you're in a special suit, you know? Oh, yeah. You think you're, you're a special boy in your special you know, you're suit. Special, like those like special GQ looking dudes, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Right, right, yeah, right, right. great stuff. And the, the bar's busy. You yeah. Know? Anyways, whatever you want to do, I don't actually care. He should be like, just bloody knock the top off one of those bloody frothies for me, mate. You know? That's what he should be saying, yes. Yeah. Mm. I think they've got a few people. Melbourne in mind. Bitter. Melbourne Bitter, say, yeah. yeah. But I guess we could expect an announcement in the next year, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And filming is two years away. It's fire. Comic book resources. Oh, my God. That bloody, bloody Aston Martin's bloody gone electric, hasn't it? <laughs> electric Aston Martin. Yeah, that, I mean, it's I'm, not manly. Aren't they freaking sick now, electric Yeah, they're freaking yeah, sick. Freaking sick, man. Yeah, 
uh, Mad- Madam Web. As, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. This is why I see comic book resources. Uh, this is a quote from theirs. It says, For a few weeks, I've heard whispers that the upcoming Madam Web project with Dakota Johnson isn't actually a Madam Web, Web project at all, but rather something else under the guise of Madam Web. Even Deadline has alluded to it, but I haven't found any proof of that. So what is it? That's a great question. Something qu- dumber than Madam Web? It could be dumber. Here's the thing. Well, this is... spider Woman. Yeah, well, this is from CBR.com, right? So this yeah. is somewhat reputable. So it's Dakota Johnson. Mm-hmm. It's also Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria and other yep, things. Yep. And Emma Roberts as well. Yeah. And those are like three up and coming, you know, they're, 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 they've got some name recognition. Yes. And I'm wondering if it, it might be, like you said, it might be a spider woman, spider women situation. Yeah. Do you think they're trying to do a spider verse live action yeah, situation? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But they've be. established none of the previous none of it. Exactly. spider characters. It is absolutely, when you think about it, it is absolutely par for the course for Sony yeah. to be like, well, it's just, because when you think about it, it's okay. Well, they all have, they all have different origin stories. Yeah. But it would, and that would be complicated, and then you have to put them all together. But I, they could attempt it. Yeah. But and there are also enough Spider Women, mm. like one of those Emma, who is it? Emma Roberts. Yeah. Sydney Sweeney could be Spider Gwen. Yeah. Like also, they could wear wigs. So they totally could. <laughs> you wear could wigs. alternate. I mean, there are plenty of Spider Women. There's, Spy, there's Spider Gwen. There's you know multiple Spider, mm-hmm. multiple women with the name Spider Woman. Yep. There's Silk. Yep. There's other ones. So I, yeah, we wouldn't put a, put a, it could be there. like a black cat, silver sable thing. Could also be that, that thing they've always been threatening. Yeah. But then they, there's no name recognition on those I characters. Feel like, I feel like maybe it's even started as a Madam Web thing and they went, oh, wait, this is nothing. Yeah. They went, okay, let's just, let's just go through the archive of Madam Web comics and we'll just <laughs> pluck out all the richest, <laughs> most detailed stories. Oh, there's, oh, she shows up once every six months in the issue of Spider-Man and mm. she's sitting in a chair and going, oh, I'm blind, but I can see the future, the future or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's no good. No, I agree. That's not very good. Yeah, I, my my money, my uh, zero dollars is going on. It's some sort of Spider-Verse with the Spider-Women because they need some heroes yes. in this universe to actually be heroes. Morbius so, was a hero. Oh, yeah, Venom, was a, Venom was a hero. That's, that is very true. Craven's going to be a big hero. He's going to be a big hero. We talked about it a bit before the show and a few people sent it our way, but there was that leak that happened this week for uh, Craven the Hunter, the storyline. Alleged leak. Yeah, and the guy who wrote true. that was just like, no, nah, I made this up. It's not yeah. Real. That that being said, it is uh, he, ha- he has nailed the tone of, of Sony, really. Yeah, oh, it's... definitely. Yeah, like me skimming that, I'm like, yeah, probably. And it did, uh, it did suggest, I think, because when we speculated about like, you know, I think it was last week about how – New Craven is now an animal lover and he loves all the animals of the world yeah. and he wants to protect them all. I think we sort of predicted that maybe his father is the original Craven the yeah, Hunter. Yeah, and that was and, in the thing. And, and he acquires the suit because his father killed yeah. the lion or whatever and that was kind of in the that was kind of in the uh the the imaginary plot summary. Exactly. Which I cannot find here, but imagine if I could. Wouldn't that what a world that would be if that I could. That would be find the it. funniest thing in the world. Because I definitely saved it, but I don't know where it is now. Yeah. <laughs> I can see is a picture of the pop band Bros. <laughs> I sent to you earlier it's not bros? Way. It's bros. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. Okay. You don't need to read it because it is fake. Mate. No, that's very true. But the, <laughs> here's some highlights. The character played by Russell Crowe is Vladimir Kravinov. What's the, what's Kravinov, the, Twitter's the original of the guy? I don't know. I just saved the okay, picture. Okay, cool. Confronts them at a warehouse. Also, I'm going to say this This was markedly similar to the uh, you know the plot leak of oh, El Muerto, which, yeah, yeah. which we, of course, uncovered. But that was that was real, though. Yeah, that was real, 100% real. Yeah. I didn't make it up. Mm. I can't uh, wait till somebody is actually assembles that from the thing that you said and then using <laughs> footage from the movie. Then I can sue them, right? Yeah, exactly. I can sue everybody. Cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Great, 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 great. Anyway, great. that's really good stuff, everybody. Good, I agree. Good, good job, I think. I good job, I think, also. Uh, Mason. Post credits, it's revealed that Dimitri, the chameleon, is not dead. Mm. Is he actually the villain in it? I have no idea. Yeah, maybe. Also, the chameleon, isn't he in, he's in No Way Home? Far From Home? Europe oh, trip. he's the he's the bus, the bus driver. driver. He's the bus driver. Well, a man name, with a man with his name is, yeah. is the bus driver. Yes, mm. great stuff, Mason. It when is when you when you're driving a tram, go on. And often people are like, "Is that true? Does Mason drive a tram?" Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Yeah, but what we've never seen it. No, so. it's true. Now, if you see a a uh, a bus driver, do you wave to them, or yeah. is that like a different? No, I'll wave to him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's not like competing. No, I don't. Not competing, so. but just like we don't mix with bus drivers. I mean, generally speaking, we don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there is a I think there is a bus depot that that is next to a tram depot, so maybe those guys hang out. They socially. fight at the very least. They fight. They they 
They lash their hands together with a silken scarf and yeah. then they knife fight. It feels yeah. like that they do that thing from Anchorman where they all show up and yeah, yeah, definitely. hit each <laughs> other with bricks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. that's the one. Good yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Mason. Go on. Ghostbusters 2 news uh-huh. by the official Ghostbusters revelation. Uh, it's going to be called Ghostbusters Afterlife 2. Nice. No, that's not true, actually. <laughs> But they, there was this tweet that says, um, the last time we saw Ecto-1, it was driving back into Manhattan, the home of Ghostbusters. Hell yeah. Uh, and there's a date for the new movie, which is December 20, 2023. Mm, too many 20s in that. I don't like it. So the end of next year, does that help? Yeah, I guess. Sure. That's great. Uh, we should be back from our break by then, luckily. <laughs> Hopefully, sure. Uh, Unless we get used to that, you know, that, that luxury. That I am luxury worried that lines. I'm going to get used to it. <laughs> Just be like, oh, why don't I do this? Every day. No, you you would get used to it, but I have the paranoia that every millisecond we're not recording stuff, yeah. we're losing listeners. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. cool. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind, Mason. Okay. Yeah. So so the, it's going back to New York. Do we have any yes. plot details or anything like that? Yes, it said that's where our story begins. Uh, the code name is Firehouse. Nice, because yeah. they work out of a firehouse. What I love about Ghostbusters mm-hmm. is that it's not a very good franchise on the whole. Sure. And all their terrible fans hate me. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> That's my favourite no, I like I like that also because that, that brings all the heat off me. Yeah. You know? You say one time that Ghostbusters 2016 is funnier than Ghostbusters 2 mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you've got all these 50-year-old men. James, you're saying it again. You've just said it again. <laughs> yeah, but I only said that because it's true. People need to get past the fact that the original Ghostbusters are in Ghostbusters 2 because it's not a funny movie. I'm not saying the 2016 one is a very funny movie because it's not, (laughs) but it is a funnier movie than that. All comedy is subjective, but that is obviously right. And the best Ghostbuster sequel is the newest one. I see what you're doing here, Which was crap. You are angling. (laughs) You're angling for a a 20-minute outraged response video from a man dressed in a Slimer costume. <laughs> and, and it's not going to happen, all right? Lightning can only strike once, James, or something is the expression. Um, I You liked the last one, didn't you? I did you? like the last one. Yeah, I thought it was, thought it was all right, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, but then and, they just did Ghostbusters 1. Remember it hit the halfway point and then they just went, Demon dogs and dimensions they, true, and yeah. whatever. And so Zool's I think what back. they want here is they want they want to bring it back to New York, but they give us a new adventure in New York. But I mean, that's Force Awakens. They had to do I, they yep. had to do a soft reboot that is also a sequel. Mm. So and that's what they did. And I think I think they pulled it off. But uh, yeah, we got to get back to New York. We got to do a new adventure in New York. Yep. Uh, maybe there's something under a bridge. I liked all the new stuff in the new one. Like I liked the maybe new there's characters. something under a bridge. Well, like what troll? A troll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Great. Or an angry New Yorker. Yeah, well, yeah, we're yeah, bloody yeah. one and the same, am I right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, all right, everybody. Um, you are right. Yeah. Um, or they could just what about what about um what about Ghostbusters regional adventures? They so just go right. out to some town and they're like, Oh, the, the townsfolk are like, Oh, there's a ghost they He's did down that. in the old way. Yeah, I know. But most of these <laughs> the last are, one was most, Ghostbusters regional adventures. Most of these are crank calls though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's what? An hour and a half of just like this is nothing, and yeah, then yeah. At the end, and like, then they're like, by oh. the way, we need it's call that fees five thousand dollars. <laughs> then they got run out of town, <laughs> and then at the end, they're like, oh, there was a ghost under this bridge, and they go zap, <laughs> yes, and yes, then it's exactly. over. Yeah, mm-hmm. great. Anyway, I can't wait to enter this discourse again, <laughs> Mason. Yes. Uh, this is via the rap. Ooh. This is Taika Waititi on his new Star Wars movie that's definitely happening. Okay, I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm willing to believe this. Asked about. I'm f- ready to believe you. Here we go. Asked about whether he's going to be filming that this year. He said, not this year. I'm going to be in New Zealand from August until the end of the year with our flag means death and time bandits. And during that time, I'll be writing. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what the story is. Now, this is supposed to be coming in 2023. Uh Obviously, that could not be the case if he hasn't finished writing it as of yet. Got to get those brand deals in there. Even if he completed writing portions. Caff. Um Hot chocolate. Hot chocks. It's yeah. a real thing in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. But even if he finished it at the end of this year, which is definitely possible. He could knock it out in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he could farm it out. He could just copy and paste some stuff I reckon the some of them do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then like you can't tell anybody. It's like right. when McCartney wrote that Bond theme in like 20 minutes or whatever. Did he? He wrote Live and Let Die oh, okay. in like 20 minutes and then was like, how many days do I have to wait till I call them that I've done it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, you'd kind of expect McCartney to knock something out in five minutes. Like, I also think what you're paying. If, if I had any faith in anybody to knock something out in five minutes that was also good, yeah, it, it would, would be, be McCart- me. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Well, I feel like, like a lot of jobs, 
Mm-hmm. And I try not to be like this for the people who work with us, mm-hmm. or for us. Yes. What's the, what's the expression, Mason? Uh, they work in spite of us. <laughs> okay, good. Is that like I don't – like a lot of jobs are you just kind of have to be there and people have to see you working. Uh-huh. Whereas I'm like this is the thing that you do. I don't care how long this takes. Right. I mean, I care if it like takes you way too long, but you know what I mean? Like just do it in the whatever mm. time that you see fit. Yes. And if you do it quickly, then so be it. Mm. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, that movie that he's yes. not going to make. Yeah. Anyways, he, then via the New York Post, he said, uh, I've got to see how that goes because once I submit it, they might determine when it gets made or even if it gets made. Oh, yeah. Are they making Star Wars movies anymore? I don't know. Maybe it's just TV now. Yeah. Because yeah. Patty Jenkins' one is not happening next year. That's true. Yeah. That was uh, the Rogue Squadron. That was the Rogue Squadron okay, one. Yeah. She was going to make the best fighter pilot movie of all time, remember? I do remember that. Yeah. I mean, is it a case of uh, six episodes to them of a TV series is better than a movie? Is it overall cheaper, I wonder? It's, I would say it's probably cheaper. I also think that. They definitely crunch the numbers on how many Disney Plus subscribers they maintain after each mm-hmm. series and so on. Yes. So it's probably more financially viable mm-hmm. to do that a lot of the time. Now, something that's struck out to me there, that's not an expression, something that... Something that sticks in your craw. Something that stuck right in my craw was that he said he's doing Time Bandits. Yeah. Is that doing new, is that new information? Because that's a that's a remake of a... It's not a, it's not a Python movie. It's a Terry but it's very, Gilliam movie. Terry Gilliam movie, I think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's doing a – what do we got here? Legacy, blah, blah, blah. I've never seen – a planned sequel. No, mm. none of that. Surely not a sequel. Oh, so, okay, Apple Inc. is working uh, to gain the rights in television. Gillian something, something. Yeah, Taika Waititi is set to co-direct the pilot. So there oh. is a series in the works. My for goodness. Apple Plus, so that's fun. Okay. And I love to party. I've never mm. seen Time Bandits. They could use many of the sets from Our Flag Means Death, I think. You think so? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Have you seen that show yet? No. It's good. Okay, but I have seen, you know, posters and stuff. And? Pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's good. It's just show. some fellas hanging out. Yeah, it's probably, a lot of that. Probably, probably fellas hanging out, just ogling girls and stuff, you know, on that on that show. Not as much as you'd think, Mason. Oh, huh, interesting. Yeah. You know, just just some some manly just some manly Navy folk. Yep, that's it. Like, yep. Oh, check out that dame. Check out these broads. Yeah, check yeah. out all these broads. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is that. If yeah, that's yeah. what you're going into. That's what the expression broadside comes from. Really? Yeah. Check out the side of this broad. Yeah, exactly. There we yeah, go. Yeah, gotcha. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Like, I, I think also Disney are probably thinking, how do we make a billion dollar movie? Yes. And can- I don't think they're thinking that. <laughs> you don't think? No, I think they're probably like, nah, too. Don't, don't, you know, don't don't go too close to the sun. You know. Yes, yeah, really. Well, that's true. Like, how can we make? How can we make a one percent return? You know. Hmm. Hmm. I already did that with Solo, but they probably realize that. Well, we can't do any mainline movies for the moment because mm-hmm. we just did that. Yes. Spin-off movies don't work because they did solo and that seems to dictate every decision they've made since. <laughs> that's right. So they're like, we have to do a new thing, mm. but that's that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Can we make some sort of interactive movie where people have to purchase those little action figure things and you stick them on a standee and then that? And sends they, a signal to the television. And they lightsaber somehow. fight as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that happens on the screen, maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What are those things called? Toys. Or have I made them up? <laughs> Toys? No, they, there was I a know, video game Disney, thing. I know, yeah. A Disney Sky Infinity. Raiders or something. Disney Infinities, There is Skylanders maybe. or whatever. Skylanders, that's yeah, they, what I'm they of. cancelled those Disney ones. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good stuff. Well, high time you bring them back, I reckon. They're great. Mm-hmm. Now, San Diego Comic Con, Mason. Everyone, everyone's like, this sucks. Are they? they don't get any more... Big reveals anymore. Oh, because it's a bunch of nothing. They do a Firefly panel, and uh, what <laughs> and, else all, they... and all the all the stars show up, and they're like, "Yeah, we would love to do another season, but you know, obviously, it's been decades, and we've all got different jobs, and Whedon's cancelled, and <laughs> all the other reasons it's not going to happen." But sure, yeah, given a completely clean slate and and an unlimited budget, and we're all free. <laughs> And we, yeah, we would do another one. And they paid us a lot of money. Yeah, we would actually. Great, yeah. great, great. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so that's what it has been for the past. It has couple been, of years. Yeah. as it were. So is this this is because obviously like Disney and DC and yeah. all those companies had their own Comic Con style reveals and, throughout the years. And pandemics and etc. Oh, yeah, also those things, sure. So anyway, both Marvel and DC are coming back to San Diego Comic Con 
This July. Whoa. As in this month. Whoa. God, I wish we were going on break during that. God damn it. Now we have to cover all of this. <laughs> God damn it. Maybe we can move it forward. Yeah, let's, okay. Uh, no. So it's going to be the 23rd of July. Okay. That weekend, the Saturdays when um, Marvel are going up. And this is what Kevin Feige said. Oh, here we go. He said, go. I think almost everything we've discussed three years ago has now been released. Whoa. So that's this Thor movie. Charge uh, Jong Chi. Mm-hmm. What else? Ms. Marvel's happening at the moment. Yes. Which people asked, are we, are we going to do a uh, recap? Yes, we're going to do that when, at it's, the end, when yeah. it's finished. Same with like Obi Wan and we're doing for the boys. Oh, and Netflix. And there's going to be a Stranger Things one this week as well. Yes. A video for that. That's crazy that all that stuff has been released. Whatever phase four is nearly over, I think. And he said, we're excited to uh, go and talk about the future. <laughs> I paused then and then you did nothing and then you you felt like you needed to do something then. Yeah. So no, that was a, genuine surprise. You had no, a big no. react. Mm. Uh, Collider Frost. I thought he was going to say, and that's it. <laughs> the future? No, 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 no. I have some. Feige's made his bank. Feige don't <laughs> care no more. <laughs> I have some potential information here via Collider Frosty who says uh, they're going big and bringing one movie. He's, he said he's wagering that it's Black Panther Wakanda forever. Oh. And speaking of, you might have seen the first look at Namor this week. I did week. see that. Uh, it's a Tenok Huerta is playing Namor. Uh, this is via MCU facility. And this is real? This is real. Okay. What do you think of this image of first image of Namor? It's a man in his underpants, isn't it? What do you not seeing though, Mason? Little wings? Yeah, little feet. wings. There is another picture that we see the little wing coming up just a little bit. Oh, so it's confirmed. He's, little, he's at least have, one little wing on his foot. Yeah, that's all okay. I want. I don't care about anything else, but he has to have little wings on his well, foot. Well, he needs I, – I don't think there was any way they wouldn't do it mm. because he needs to be differentiated from Aquaman. Yeah. And, and the way to do that is be like he's the master of the sea but also the master of the air mm-hmm. because of his little wings. he got little wing. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. That's uh, – so big MCU what turn out this wild – yeah. What a wild concept that's always been. Isn't it strange that somebody can invent something in the 60s mm-hmm. and now we're at the modern day where you have to do it? Sure, there was yeah. a year where you'd be like, we're not doing that. Yeah, that's yeah, dumb. Yeah. And they'll change like every element of it, probably change his name yeah. and all of these other things. But now if you don't strictly adhere to all these dumb things, yeah, yeah, yeah. too bad. That's right. You know, you get attacked mercilessly. Anything that you're looking to see. Apparently there's also going to be some clarity. We t- I think we talked about this last week in terms of what's next. Yeah. Like, right. what are we building towards, mm. you know? Uh, I would like a hint to – I would like a hint as to what the the overarching I think he's going to come out is. and just go Secret Wars or okay, right, right, right. whatever, whatever. Mm. Whatever, you know? <laughs> whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Somebody else's problem. Yeah, but I think the MCU is a good example, uh, which the Star Wars is not doing, which, which Star Wars isn't doing, where they're doing a balance of TV shows and, and movies. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, right. it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot, and all the time. And part of the reason why we stopped doing weekly recaps because we're like, this is a, this is a lot. Yeah. Um. But yeah, but Star Wars is just not, just not kind of not doing that anymore. Anyways, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to see. I'd love to see what do I want to see. Doctor Doom. Yeah. Love, okay. Did you see also that John Krasinski might not be Mister Fantastic in regular universe? Yeah, I did universe? see that. Yeah, because um, Feige said something to the effect of. It was pure fan casting. We just wanted to give the fans what they wanted, and I think. But there was some heavy implication in there that the regular universe, uh, Mr. Fantastic, is not going to be. Here's something that I think. Go on. I hope that's true. I hope yeah. that they do recast him. I, think I so. thought he was fine, but I want to see. I don't know. I, I It did feel obvious, and just uh-huh. to kind of to do a, do a bit of a zag. I also would have preferred in that movie if they put in Yoan Griffith, to be honest. Yeah, sure. Kill that version. I don't care. <laughs> And he's also he's been in a previous thing, and people love people That's from very a previous true, thing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that discussion was also had. Anyways, this is now in regards to what DC are doing, and then and this is via the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, Kevin Feige also saying what they're doing. That's right. Yeah, they they fell down and they peed themselves, and yep, they, and they rolled in the pee. Rolled in the pee. They got pee all over their bum. Yeah, and everybody saw. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody saw and laughed. They <laughs> laughed. <laughs> uh, Warner Brothers Discovery's presence at Comic Con is intended to reassure fans that the company still has them top of mind, even as they as the merger re, uh, remake remakes executive ranks and aligns the company's divisions, including HBO Max, Warner Brothers Pictures, and DC in a new direction. Wow! So th- you know how you're a fan. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. doing what you want. Oh, that's terrific. You, you got all you fans out there, you thought we thought you're a bunch of grubs. But actually, 
Top of mind. Yeah. You're our favourite grubs. We love the money that you have. That's right. And we want it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is purely transactional. <laughs> and you know that. Yeah, we all know. Uh, apparently, though, there's... All the cards on the table. Apparently, some of the... You want your stupid blue beetle? You want your... You want, you want the rock doing a big punch and saying he's got the biggest punch? Give us your money. <laughs> we'll do that. Otherwise... He's gonna. We've got two versions of Black Adam ready to go, and if you don't, if you if you don't give us a big weekend, we're gonna we're gonna withdraw the good version where he does a big punch, and bring in a version where he's got a weedy little punch. Yep. And and a bunch of like regular dudes just kick him to death in a car park. <laughs> and then he wheezes his pants. <laughs> and he wheezes his pants. <laughs> and he rolls in the way. That's right. And who sees? Everybody sees. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Apparently, though, uh, we're got, not going to see anything from The Flash or Blue Beetle. Mm. It says because they're too far out. I'd imagine The Blue Beetle is too far out, but I don't yeah. think that's the reason why mm. The Flash is it. I want to talk more about that in a second. Some people's volley attitudes are a bit far out as I far completely as I agree. I, I'm guessing, and this is just off the top of my head, I think they're probably, they'll show Black Adam and Shazam. Yes. They'll probably announce whatever the next Batman is, like as in the new villain. Yep. I'm hoping for a Superman reveal. But I wouldn't bank on I, it. No, absolutely. Not, uh, no. I don't know what they're doing, yeah. and I don't think. I, I mean, think they know. I mean, they would know at this point, surely. I don't think they do. <laughs> I guess we'll all find out. We sure will on the day. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, if it's just Black Adam Shazam next Batman, I know. Yeah, we that. all know those things. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you kind of need to bring something else. Anyways, this was via uh, Carol. What, what do you think would cause people to lose their minds? I think it might be new Batman v Superman two. Nice. Uh, I don't know. This time in a car park, <laughs> <laughs> and you better arrive at opening weekend because you know what we're gonna do. You saw what we did to the rock. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care anymore. I we would. Been... I would see that movie. Yeah, <laughs> we could have made more money. Manufacturing extruded plastics. We were decided to make movies. We can change on a dime. We'll do it. Exactly. Um, I think. I think if if they brought Cavill back in just to yeah. wear a Superman t shirt and come on stage and wave and say big things on the way, I think people would lose their minds. Yeah, and then it can be anything. It could be anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he could be. He could be just – it could be a la The Flash where he's just one Superman in yep. a multiverse and he's passing the torch to a new Superman or whatever it is. Yeah. But I think – They'd have to recognise that people like him, right? I don't know, They man. know something about him we don't. <laughs> I don't think it would matter if they did because they don't seem to care what I think he's just – but also they've – They've missed the window in that he's doing he's doing The Witcher and he's yeah. doing he's, he's, a, still he's a Netflix player now yeah like he's doing Enola Home like he's in Sherlock Holmes yeah he's barely in those that I reckon movie. he might be more more in the new one though yeah you might be right oh speaking of did you know this this is a, this is one bit of news oh I love news. Uh, the Russo brothers are moving forward with the Electric State for Netflix yeah what's this well that's I think we mentioned it before it remember I mentioned many trillions of years ago mm-hmm. there's a series on Amazon Prime called Tales from the Loop. It's about – Oh, and it's said, sort of like an alternate history where there was like this particle accelerator in this small town yeah. and then it opened up a gateway and there's all sorts of weird stuff. It's got amazing stuff. art and stuff. It's based yeah, so on... it's Simon Stallenberg who's a, who was an mm. artist who, who was sort of inspired by Macquarie. Yeah. yeah Ralph, 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 Ralph Macquarie. Ralph Macquarie yeah. to do sort of like beautiful uh, kind of – like beautiful vistas, natural vistas, but put in like weird mechanical stuff and alien stuff. But this is – it's not set in the same universe, but the, he, had, he one of his books is called The Electric State, which is it's still an art book, but it has more of a narrative to it. And it's about a okay. girl who has a robot pal, and she's she's crossing, uh, she's attempting to cross like an alternate nineteen nineties America where there was a war and everything's yeah. sort of fallen apart. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's Millie Bobby Brown is going to be the girl, and the robot is presumably going to be a robot. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay, but the Electric Dream show that you watched or whatever. Tales from the Loop. Yes. It wasn't very good. It was say. slow, certainly. Like it I was, think it was interesting. I think yeah. if I was in a in a state, if I if I was in a perpetual state of I'm going to burn through this, so I can burn through the next thing. Yeah, really. Do you think quick. you would have loved it in like 2003 or something? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's got an 86 percent on a Rotten Tomato. There you go. Maybe this and it's is got good. a good cast. Like they're a good and it, 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 it says here it's got a shit cast. Oh, no, I typed in cast and it said don't even bother. Who's to say specifically was bad. Jonathan Price hates yeah, he him. Was bad. Rebecca Hall yeah, hates bad. him. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Brutal. I mean, I, I mean, they're not wrong. 
Yeah. It's just career worst performances from all of them. I'm looking at these names and faces. And yeah, the faces especially. Yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. No wonder this didn't do well. Yeah, I know. people resoundingly went I should went watch yuck. this. I feel like it'd have like a same kind of, um, you know, do you watch For All Mankind? Like that kind of slow. Yeah, kind of, slow burn. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. That's a great show, by the way, yeah. if you haven't seen it. Uh, I've seen a little bit. And? Pretty good. You did so like the bit they weed each Career other, worst weed on each other in a car park? No, I didn't like that, James. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's not for everybody, no, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, that's uh, that, that's going forward, and it's fascinating. The Russo brothers are just like, like they did they did Endgame. They did they steered they steered the Marvel universe, the MCU, to like financial heights. Yeah, Un- unheard of before, and now they're just like, yeah, we'll do a sweet Netflix deal. We'll we'll knock this out. We'll do that uh, that one with uh, Chris Evans, where he's a Secret Service guy or whatever. Oh yeah, that's coming up. The yeah, Grey Goose. Coming. Yeah, the Grey Goose. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. Sponsored by Grey Goose Vodka. That's right. Uh, just getting back to the DC stuff. Go on. It's by Carolyn Kwan, who was a uh, writer on Lucifer, among other things. Oh, and the she, rudest show there is. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she wrote on Twitter and then deleted. Oh, a friend of mine recently had a project cancelled that he had written eight episodes for because it involved the Flash, and Ezra Miller continues to be a nightmare. Oh, so an eight issue, an eight episode series. Yes. Wow. Apparently, also the, the other, this is via Variety. According to sources with knowledge of the project, uh, this is the upcoming Flash movie. Um. The film simply costs too much to scrap. Uh, entirely, and reshooting with a new actor in Miller's role is similarly, similarly cost prohibitive oh. uh, because the actor is virtu- in virtually every scene, yeah, sometimes right. twice also. Mm. Also, the film uh, likely can't generate the revenues needed to turn a profit without a robust theatrical run, so putting the movie directly on HBO Max is also unlikely. So it just seems as if they're going to just release it as is. Yeah, it feels like a little bit of wait till it blows over. Yep. Do you think they're going to... Do you think we're going to see any flash footage at this DC, no, SDCC? Yeah, no, no, right? It's also, it's a year away. Yeah, I think they're going to wait, hope everything blows over, hope the Ezra Miller drama mm. dissipates or all the... Well, they, they get some help or something and can yeah. come out and be like, I got some help. Yes, oh, exactly. I, I'm experiencing, clearly there's some deep-seated mm. you know, mental health issues here and, yeah. you know... I don't, I don't know, but I think they're, yeah, they're just gonna, they're just trying to see what happens and try not to lose any money on it. Yes, yeah, Fat, fascinating stuff, Mason. Fascinating stuff. Uh, that's all for the big Comic Con though this year Ooh. coming up. Are you excited for Comic Con coming back? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, what was the but the the eight episode thing? What oh yeah, it was, was a. Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing it was Flash centric at the very least, right? Because if they were in it, they'd have to have been in a lot yeah, to right. cancel it. Because otherwise, they'd just be like. I don't know replace the Flash with Aquaman or whatever. Yeah, right. It'd have to be like a two fl- Aquaman, two twack twackwoman, twackwoman, <laughs> twackwomans. But eight episodes on, I assume HBO Max. So yeah, Justice League series, maybe. Right, I don't know. But I mean, I think you could still do that though. Yeah, I think so too. Mm, anyways, don't know. Mm. Mason, it's time for a Weekly Planet exclusive, oh. aka hot scoop or shot of poop. Wow. Now, what that means is, mm. if you are uh, one of the big trades or even a small trade. You need to understand that this segment is called Hot Scoop and Shot of Poop. Or Shot of Poop. Or Shot of Poop. You can run this. We encourage it. Yep. But you must say that You must this... credit this podcast and name the segment. Yes. Otherwise, people will harangue you, unfortunately. Yeah. We're not asking them to do that, but that will happen. People take it on their own, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we don't control any of that. Anyways, according to uh, my source's source. Oh. This is two sources, Dave. Two sources, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Daredevil. Uh, what, you, what is this bloody hot ones? We're two sources <laughs> deep right now. Uh, this is for the new. Tell ep- me about where you grew up. That's fascinating. A regular place. Oh, it's the not, suburbs. It's not interesting. Yeah, no, it's not. I know. <laughs> um, uh, the Echo series, which is coming up, which also is the a Marvel uh, spin-off. spinoff of Yep. Yep. Daredevil is in it for three episodes, as Whoa. in Charlie Cox, Kingpin. Vinny D'Onofrio is in four. Uh, the Kingpin storyline is building up to him running for mayor of New York City. Apparently he's going to be wearing, be wearing an eye patch because he was shot in the head in Hawkeye. I remember that. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Daredevil is also going to be rocking a red and black suit and is looking for Jessica Jones. Whoa. So they're laying the groundwork to bring back uh, Ritter most likely. That's exciting. Not necessarily in this series. John Ritter? He died, unfortunately. He did, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could bring him back. Could bring him back. They shouldn't, but they could. <laughs> they absolutely could. Mm. So, yeah, there you go. I don't know in terms of continuity, like, 
is the Charlie Cox version the same one? Still, even though we obviously saw him in Spider Man, is yes, that yes. the same one from, from mm-hmm. the Netflix series? Yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't know. But it seems like some of the Netflix stuff, with probably the exception of Iron Fist, uh, is going to be making its way. Yeah, right. Uh, and that's, I think that's great because. I like all those people. Good and characters, And I like yeah. those series. So mm-hmm. there you go. That's an exclusive. Uh, just to clarify, this is in our hot scoop or shot of poop segment, segment of the show. That's correct, yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, Mason, Please credit. Please credit. Mm-hmm. Mason, we've got a big guest this week, don't yeah, we? He's coming through the door right now. He's coming now. through the door right now. We can't stop him. Get out of here, man. <laughs> uh, now, Get look, your opinions out of here. If I could, uh, look, I feel like this is something we might forget to bring up because we are talking about the new series that they're making. Mm-hmm. There are two hosts of that show, and we only mentioned the one who is here. Yes. Do you want to quickly fill us in? Oh, yeah. Well, um, ben Russell was yeah. the guest who's clambering through the door right now. Yep. We didn't record a segment last week or the week before. Mm-hmm. He's, mm-hmm. he's coming through the door right now. Yep. Uh, he's got a, a new uh, TV series on the way mm-hmm. uh, called uh, Time to Die in which comedians – you don't have to explain it. Oh, okay, right. I got the feeling we're going to do that. No, no, I was finished. In okay. which comedians? <laughs> yes. Uh, but he's hosting it with uh, uh, Sydney comedian Jen Fricker, who yes, is that's right. super funny. Exactly. A friend of the show, doesn't listen to this show. Anyways, Ben, have a seat and we'll do that now, all of that. <laughs> we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Now, Mason, it's not often on the show that we say, hey, we don't know enough about a topic. Let's get a guest on because no. we're, we're so knowledgeable. I disagree. Most, I think normally of... it's we don't know anything about a topic and we just decide to sort yeah, we'll, of wing we'll just, it anyway. We'll give it a go, just yeah, because we don't know anybody. Rush away any gaps in our knowledge and just be like, did you see that one? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I saw that one. But we're bringing in a bona fide expert. That's right. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about in very brief and uh, what's what's the word? Quick? Oh, was that a good word to use? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Very brief. Quick's quick the best word. About the history of Star Trek properties, including movies and TV shows and other bits and pieces. We've did got you Ben say, Russell Did you here. say Star Trek? Star, you said Star Trek. That's Hello, how you I'm say ben it, isn't Russell. it? No, no, Ben Russell is <laughs> no, here. No, no, it is. It's Star Trek. We're I'm Ben about Russell. Here's the expert. The talking about here. Star Trek. <laughs> Let's talk about Star Trek, y'all. <laughs> I think we should talk about Ben Russell first, though. Absolutely, Star we should. Star Trek is a great courier service. It's the privatized wing of the post office. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of the best. It's certainly better than Courier's Place. Oh, my goodness. Courier's Please. Courier's Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you've got a bunch of awesome stuff on your belt. Yeah, what? The, the Grub Podcast. Yes. You're in uh, multiple Auntie Donna skits, including the Auntie Donna Netflix TV show. This is correct. Gamey Game Game, of course. Your job is to derail that show. Yes. Which is a lot of fun to watch. It's a I, pleasure to do. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually lo- I like computer games. You, you wouldn't know it from watching gaming games. That's interesting. I didn't, yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. But a, a really exciting thing that you've been working on, first of all, in podcast form with Tom Witty, who I yes. believe is the creator or co-creator. How He's would you say? He's the creator. Okay, yeah. Just Whereas to, I'm merely the host and helper to... Get the goodwill of the stand-up community on board. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> okay, betray I get them. you. <laughs> betray them, yes. Do you want so. to tell us a bit about what that is? Sure. Well, the podcast we started pre-COVID. Yeah. Hence why it's not a podcast anymore. It was so the, the conceit of both of the shows, both the television and the podcast, is that we get two comedians and they write material for each other. Oh, yes. great material. Well... Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yes. That sounds like a nice well, thing. What, what, what? Yeah. It's, it's called Time the... to Die. Oh. Gentlemen. So, uh, which is not a James Bond reference. Oh. This is pre-James Bond reference. You got in first. Yeah. We got in first. Mm. Yeah, we they write material and then perform it in front of an unwitting audience so they don't know that the, what's happened, the audience. And, um, and, yeah, so the job is to basically write the worst – uh, Stand up set that you can think of, and then they perform it like it's their own, and mm-hmm. uh, things go according to plan. And the job is to present the material in a way without deviating, but try and get a laugh yeah. if you can. Yeah, so it's awarded to the best, the one that does the best, really. That's yeah, the, yeah. that's the that's the game, right? But the real game is a the friends that we make along the way, but Absolutely. also just the wonderful Schadenfreude that is <laughs> what watching a comedian die on stage. Horribly. <laughs> Does Which, it always work out like that, though? Well, see, see, Ben Russell, if I may. Yes. When I think of Ben Russell, I think you, you're a man who, you know, they say you could read the phone book and make it funny. Yeah. So, yeah. so do another thing. So, what do. if somebody's mm-hmm. been given some really bad material, but they're like, but they, 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 they like, they just, they have a certain charm about them, and they just kind of can push it through. Yeah. Well, I think that definitely comes through in a lot of stuff, and and Sonia, who's in uh, both the pod and the TV series. Mm. She does remarkably well because she's so charming 
and she's so that's frustrating. Yeah, and, she, yeah. and when you when she sort of smiles at you, like, oh, okay, this must be funny, even though mm. it's not funny, even <laughs> a, a little bit. Um, so I, she does quite well, I'd mm. have to say. Yeah. She uh, she does really well considering her material. But you know, I think it's she's also really good at writing material that's tailor made for someone to die. So oh, she true. thinks oh, about wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. She thinks about the act and then goes all yeah. in. You have to find points their... out their weaknesses. You find <laughs> their voice. Yes. And then you go you you what I guess you want is you want you want somebody to to watch the stand up and go, "Man, Ben Russell's lost it. He used to be really good mm-hmm. and yeah. he's still He's still doing the jokes that he does, but yeah. something's gone wrong. <laughs> something's here. gone wrong. Yeah, he's yeah. maybe he's going through. A this is the time. essence of Ben Russell, but yeah. Hmm, yeah, I don't like this anymore. Yeah, so I mean, that's and that's it. That's the show, and it's so you, it's kind of a stand-up slash almost a, a prank show in a way. <laughs> it's lots of fun, and it's particularly fun to watch and and just be in the safety of your own yeah. home mm. and watch someone going through what. A lot of people uh, consider it to be one of the scariest things th- that they can do. You know, yeah. public speaking is is widely considered a horror show for a lot of people. So why is anybody signing up for this? <laughs> Who are these people? That's a very good question. Do they have a death wish? Are they are they like is the is the thrill of stand up gone for them? And they're just like, there must be. <laughs> I, I want to feel something. I'm going to feel something now. Well, there would be something freeing about like I'm intentionally ruining this, though. Yeah, right. I think there's two things. I think that there's for me. What would attract me if someone to, were to ask me to, to do it? I'd be like, great, I can write horrible material for someone <laughs> and watch them perform it. They have to do it. Yeah, That excites me as a, as a comedian. <laughs> Number two, dying on stage to material that you have worked really hard at and written and gone, this is going to be funny, and then you mm. do it, and it's no good. <laughs> that yeah. that yeah. breaks your heart. Yeah, yeah. And destroys part of your soul. Every time that happens, mm. a little piece of my soul is gone. So much so that there's very little left now. Oh, wow. Um, I've humiliated myself so many times <laughs> in my my career that is too long to be at the level that I am at. For the um, things that I, I, I've never seen you humiliate yourself, if, uh, if you don't mind me saying so. I feel much. like it's weighted very much in the opposite direction. Whenever you turn up in a thing, I'm like, oh, good, Ben Russell. Oh, that's very kind yeah, of you. Yeah. But, I mean, and especially when you're writing new material, you you have to do it and you can't be afraid to die because that's part of the writing process almost. You, yeah. You know, yes, you might write something new that works and that's a joy. Mm. But, mm. you know, you got to work at things. It doesn't yeah. just happen overnight. It takes uh, way too much work. So I think to do something and die but be protected by you didn't write this. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not you didn't write this material. Yeah. So while it's not pleasant, it's kind of like a dying simulation. (laughs) (laughs) And you don't have to live with it forever because at the end everybody knows. And it's for a purpose and it's (laughs) for uh, uh, entertainment. Yeah. So it's kind of your – it's dying light. So it's like – Oh, nice. It's like a nice – it's yeah. bomb simulator. It's it's comedy palliative care. Is yeah, what it is. Yeah. That's it's having your heart restarted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's I think there's merit to comedians not being afraid of failure because once you get you can get sort of afraid of failure and that that might prevent you from mm. writing more because yeah. you're like, oh, I'll just do what works, you know, instead mm. of taking those risks that you need to take. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. I'll do what won't works for this guy. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. It's fun. It's really – and I'm not just saying it because I'm in it and I have to promo this. <laughs> it's genuinely yeah. uh, wonderful to watch. Well, speaking of promo, there's an episode available now because this uh, a pilot has been made and obviously there's a whole podcast uh, season. Well, most mm-hmm. of a podcast season. I think yours was the only podcast that couldn't run during lockdown yeah, it was, in it the was, world. It was really bad timing. <laughs> yeah. So we started. We did three or three episodes of the podcast, and then COVID hit, mm. and comedy died for two years. And yeah, then, and then by the time it was coming back, we were like, "Hey, we got a TV show." So I think, uh, <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, it's that easy, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's on the Ben. Where can people find this wonderful pilot? Uh, the part is out now on Ten Play. Go see yeah. it if you are overseas. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Get a VPN, okay? Mm. Set it to Australia. Mm. Australia-based VPN. So I use that. I'll go on to American Netflix. I don't oh, even wow. give a shit anymore. <laughs> Jesus. And guess what? It's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except it but, doesn't have the office. I yeah. Think. yeah. But it's got can... that Hemsworth movie that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. That's got Ben Knight in it, the spider head one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that yet. Comedian yeah. Ben Knight. He's, he's doing great. Yeah, he's, he's doing all sorts of ads and shows well, and things. Big hunk. He's you know? a big hunk. And he's, a, he's a big. Have you, do you know Ben Knight, James? Ben, can, is it with a K? With a yeah. K, yeah. Wow, he's a big, he's a big red-headed hunk. He used to yeah. be a teacher. Oh, wow. That's, oh, no, I do know this guy. Yeah. Look, look at him. He's yeah. Look at this guy. I know ridiculous. Absolutely. He's ridiculous. Outrageous. Yeah. Comedy should be for Argos only. I completely agree. Mm, I agree. Yeah. Uh, no argument there. But here's a show that's not really for Argos, I guess, but I, I want to get into. We're going to go through, as mentioned, the history of Star Trek uh, starting. Uh, what, yes. Why don't we start with, like, what is everybody's kind of base, I don't know, level of understanding for Star Trek? Where are they at? What's yeah. the history, you know? Yeah. Because I know I've talked about how, like, I know too much for a normal person, but for anybody who's a fan, I'm like, So you're a Trek, you, you enjoy Trek, I enjoy but on it. a casual basis. No, and I've seen bits and pieces of everything, and I think the first thing I ever saw was, I think, Star Trek uh, First Contact. Yep. And I was Great. like... I was like, wow, this is Star Trek. What am I missing out on? But not a, a lot of it isn't about um, yeah. uh, snapping, a, <laughs> snapping the spinal cord of an alien queen. That, one of the um, best Star Trek. Yeah. by the way. Yeah. That, that, one's, that one's the probably – it's one of the less ponderous kind of yeah, it's the, like pieces the die of Star hard Trek of, media. It's, yeah, it is very <laughs> diehard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's nonstop action from start to finish and, yeah. and you were sold a false bill of goods there. But it's still, it still you know, has philosophical questions. Sure, yeah. That's right. It does. Uh, you know. Like what if? A man went on a Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. What about you guys, though? What, what's your history of? Oh, I grew up with it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, Amer- my family is American. Mm-hmm. We loved Star Trek. My dad loves the original. That's what we sort of started with. And then the movies. So from William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy sort of up until next year. I remember going over. I was at my uncle's place in Florida, Pensacola, Florida. Shout out. Oh, shout out to shout Pensacola, out to Pensacola. Wings of Gold. And uh, so we, I would, I remember sitting and watching Star Trek: Next Generation for the first time there before before the plebs of Australia had seen it. Oh my goodness! Yes. Because this was pre-internet times. Yeah, we got episodes like maybe on a Tuesday night, maybe yeah. you know <laughs> sporadically. Yeah, and I think that's why I haven't seen a lot of this because it just wasn't really on at a regular mm-hmm. time. And then from then, I think you know we watched a lot of Star Trek: Next Gen, and we would go to the local Video Easy yeah. and get two episode. VHS tapes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine mm-hmm. that would continue for Star Trek Voyager and um, and beyond. That's right. And so, you've been a fan of everything, is that correct? Yeah, I, I always, well, I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm a fan of everything. There's a lot of there's there's some <laughs> bad stuff in. Oh yeah, yeah. And sometimes you like the bad stuff. Yeah. You know the bad. Uh, I, part of the reason I like Star Trek is because of that kind of hokey, kind of dumb. Yeah. ridiculous thing. That's what Goofy. I like about a lot of Star Wars. People are like, this is the worst, this is bad. And it's like, well, you've seen Star Wars before, like any of it. Like, that's what it is. It's yeah. a very mixed bag. Do you remember that it's time they were, all caught, all, they were all caught in the trash compactor? They couldn't get out of it. They couldn't get out. They yeah. couldn't get out of a bin for I several th- minutes. I think people forget that Star Wars is and always has been for kids. Yeah. Except when that dude got on fire. But other than that, it's pretty, it's sure. pretty kid-friendly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so what defines bad Star Trek? Because mm. um, a lot of people would say, uh, you know, I think people who love the the newer movies would be like, you know, oh, some of this old Trek is quite slow and like ponderous and yeah. et cetera. Oh, sure, and but, looks like shit or but whatever. The new, <laughs> say that what they call the, what is it, the Kelvin timeline? Kelvin timeline, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The first one is, is you know, got its problems but it's actually really good it's and it's beautiful and mm. i think chris pine is a wonderful kirk and i think he gets better and better with his performances as the movies go on and i would love to see another kelvin timeline i would love to see that hemsworth yeah uh, chris pine one the second star trek is uh, of the kelvin timeline is bad into darkness <laughs> is it's jj doing movie. yeah what jj does and just throwing so much incoherence at the wall and yeah. hoping that some it'll stick it'll it's like monkeys and typewriters, you know. Yeah, it's like, thing. and you know some of these things. You know, it's like Khan, you know, Khan. It's and, just references. Uh, yeah. It's much like, hey, remember this? Well, this is kind of the character, but we call, we going to call him that character anyway. That's right. And a big controversy was like, uh, we're not going to, well, no, it's not Khan. Uh, we've done something different here. And then in the movie, yeah. they're like, guess what? It was Khan. Everyone's it's like, so well, dumb. Okay, great. Terrible film. I well, don't and all disagree. the mainstream viewers who, who, Cottoned onto Star Trek for the first time in the first one. Watched the second one and went, "Who's Khan?" Yeah, what's this? yeah. yeah. Who's and this it's guy? done in such a lame way. And Benedict Cumberbatch does one of 
I think one of his the worst performances of his career in it. Um, <laughs> it's one of the he's ones not where you're suited to it. Is he's it? real it's one of those bad. Yeah. He's where you watch and go, Is he a good actor at all? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of those real ones. bad. Yeah. And then the third one, which was written by Simon Pegg and I believe Jane. It was uh, one of Fast the, and Furious. Yeah, it was Justin Lin. Yeah, that's a really good. Agreed. Movie. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's like a great episode of Star Trek, which is kind of what the movies should be. Mm-hmm. Mm. Pine really sinks into his role as Kirk, and I think that's probably the most realized Kirk that we've yeah. seen that's not, you know, William Shatner. I saw I remember seeing the trailers for that and it was like Beastie Boys and Dirt Bikes. Mm. And I'm like, what <laughs> what is happening? But then in the context of the movie, yeah, it's real yeah. good. It's and, very Id- fun. and Idris Elba was a real crusty demon as well. <laughs> he was, was a real crusty <laughs> demon. Still yeah, tied yeah. in there, you know. So we've talked about the the newer stuff. Do you want to go yeah. back to the very beginning and we'll kind of work our way through? Of I've, course. I've seen very little of the original. You want to do movies or you don't want to do TV shows? Do you want to, <laughs> I've, I've I've basically written them out in rough chronological order of like how they yeah. come out. So it's basically the original series, the animated series, then all the first movies and. So and and so if forth. I'd just like to say, if we get things wrong and you're a big hardcore tre- Trekkie, good good for you, but just let us enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, let us have a good time. Let us have a good time. Don't yeah. even tell me about it. <laughs> I don't even want to know if I'm wrong. Okay, let me live in my lie and live in my truth. Do you want to give out your Twitter handle now or do you not want to do it at all? <laughs> at Ben Russell's. <laughs> I I will not respond to you. <laughs> <laughs> just just try it. Just see if you can get a response out of him. <laughs> Here's a question. Yeah. Did Lucille Ball have something to do with Star Trek? Yes. Yes. Oh, she everybody, sure these two have got the facts. There we go. I watched The Toys That Made Us, I think, or something. Oh, yeah. she, I saw a tweet about it and I went, okay, I'll file that away for so later. So her production company, mm. uh, Ball Productions. Dizzy Lou? Oh, yes. Was it Dizzy Lou Productions? Dizzy Lou, yeah. I have no Dizzy idea. Lou Productions. Because of Desi Arnaz, yeah. Yes. They greenlit... Uh, Mission Impossible and Star Trek. Oh, wow. So they originally, they made it happen and then sold it to... To J.J. J. J. Abrams. What would, be, what would be Paramount. So right. Lucille Ball is responsible for most of Simon Pegg's post-spaced career because he's yeah. in Star Trek and Mission Impossible. And mm-hmm. some of J.J. J. Abrams's films. He did one Mission Impossible. No, he's Simon in... Pegg. He's in... Uh, oh, sorry. And I said and J.J. J. Abrams. Oh, yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. In addition to... Oh, that's true. I probably yeah. said a different thing, but in my head I said a, the, the right thing. <laughs> yeah. The beauty of podcasting is we could chop all that out, but we're not going to. No, no, we don't need to. People that's need right. to know. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of... That's, I love that fact. Yeah. yeah. That Lucy was, Ball... What an incredible woman, really. Yeah. Just amazing work. So wasn't also the original Kirk was recast? Well, like in the pilot, it was a different guy. Originally, in the pilot, which is a fantastic pilot, mm. they had a a woman second in command, right? And who was done by Major Barrett, which oh. was Roddenberry's wife. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Who eventually went on to do the computer voice in Star Trek: Next Gen. Ah, cool. And it was Captain Pike. Mm. Captain Pike and Spock was still there, and there was a lady second in command, and they felt that I think while Pike was cool, he was a little bit like military, right? And that wasn't really in the sixties. That wasn't really the era for yeah. Yeah, I think they needed more of a lover. Yes, kind of a a cowboy mm. lover, not mm. a sort of a military. Boy Scout, which is the way that Pike sort of presents it. And they really do. We'll get into the newer TV series. I Spoiler alert, I don't like most of them, except for Strange New Worlds, which is just out now. Yeah. Which Anson Mount is in it. And yes. It's, I love this. I, I'm loving it sick. <laughs> um, You're green in the face. Yeah. And I think Pike just, uh, I don't know. I really like Pike, mm. especially in the new series. And um, he just didn't really work. Mm. And so they recast and put in James T. Kirk and William Shatner, and it all just went off from there. But they also they did they write it into the continuity, or was that something they did? They brought it back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a because yeah, uh, he does come back in the box. Yeah, he comes yes, he back does in come the in the box. box. Yeah, 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 and they go back to the planet with the big brain aliens. That's fun. It's good to see a big brain on TV. <laughs> oh man, it's yeah. good to see a big brain alien. So it was a big hit, kind of. Brief. Oh no, it was a big hit, but it was like hot. It was expensive, right? And there mm. were like production troubles and. Yeah, it, I mean, it was. I love watching uh, original series. It's it's so corny and hokey and sixties mm. and misogynist and <laughs> <laughs> lots of kissing and grabbing. so much kissing and. But it was actually kind of you know. Of course, there's the first interracial kiss yeah. that's uh, on television there, and it was it was progressive. Like we had a Russian on the on the bridge of the Enterprise. We had an Asian American. Yeah, it mm. was. It was very much a progressive thing, and and Roddenberry is 
although he has some very dubious views and the way that he behaves to women, I believe, he was a social progressive, I guess, in in, a, in the way that he was a, a socialist. Yeah. And he's, he's the Star from... Trek universe is socialist. Mm. It's a post-scarcity, no-money society. Yeah. And with NFTs, we're going to get there, guys. <laughs> we're going to push through artificial scarcity. We're going to get yeah. to I find no that, scarcity. I find that amazing that all of those messages are so clearly there. But I feel like a lot of people either willfully ignore that or, have, or, or you know, when you're updated for modern politics, they're like, yeah. well, no, that's not what it's about. But no, like things progress with time. Like having that cast <clears> on screen <throat> now is not unusual, but mm. for the times. For yeah, the time, yeah. yeah. that was... You, just, you didn't see that, like, at all, really. No, yeah. not not at all. Yeah. You know, that's as crazy as Lucy Ball being pregnant on TV, mm. you know, was. So it was It was pretty – it's pretty cool. And yeah. there is some genuinely good episodes What's your involved. favorite episode, Ben Russell? Oh, you're killing me. Oh, Encounter yeah. at Farpoint, the one named that's that I know. Star that's Trek a Star Trek Next Generation. Generation. Sorry, what's that's the one? The pilot. No, no, I was joking. I was joking. Oh, no. I was joking. I was a joke. You, you guys got, I thought you knew, in the internet I thought you guys knew names. comedy. I thought you guys all knew comedy in this room. <laughs> No, what's the one with uh, Did someone with Khan? writes that joke for you, James? Khan, uh, the collapse. seeds, seeds, something. Space, Space seed, seed. Yeah. Space yeah. is, you, is yeah. quite good. Yeah, mm. um, yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> you know, um, the one with the Horta, where the they go to a mining. I don't know the names of Star Trek episodes. Yeah, yeah. I just know they you go to a the mining. The they go to a mining, and there's a slug, and it's like it doesn't make. It's a non-carbon based life form, and. Mm. Spock mind melds with it. And then there's the one where Spock goes, re- gets really horny and has got to fight <laughs> Captain Kirk. Uh, there's the one where everyone kind of gets horny and takes off their shirts. Mm, so uh, he's running around with his sword. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, there's the – I think probably the my favourite is the one where they go back to the pilot episode planet mm. and Spock kind of goes rogue. And right. And like goes and gets Captain Pike and takes him to this planet so he can kind of live – not out of the box. Is it that? Is it the same box. actor? Do they go back? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think they probably just reuse footage. I don't oh, know okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a different actor. But yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah, so, there's some really interesting stuff. Like all the mirror universe stuff is really mm, different. That's the origin, the origin of the mirror universe that they have less and less, effect, less and less effectively used ever since. Yeah. Like, I think that Deep Space Nine kind of did it to death. They kind of killed mm, it. Yeah, yeah. And then Discovery was like, hey – we don't have any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and we as writers watch Star Tre- one episode of Star Trek and this was the episode of Star Trek that we watched. <laughs> the, uh. the, the thing about the mirror universe is, and I think I've discussed this with you before, James, yeah. is that the further along the timeline it goes, mm. the less sense it makes. Like it yes. makes sense that there would be a mirror Spock and a mirror Kirk, but 100 years later why would there also be a mirror Benjamin is it, Cisco. Is it the yeah. same mirror universe they keep dipping into? It is. Uh, the Terran Empire, which is the bad. Uh, but in DS9, the Terran Empire it falls. Like it, mm. it's gone now. Right, okay. But it's, I was going to say it's in Discovery, but that's in the past or whatever. Yeah, Discovery is set in, in, the, in the past. <laughs> yeah. It really is an all whatever. They kind of just kind of, it's, <laughs> I got such big problems with the writing of Disco- Discovery. They're kind of just magic and feeling their way out of things. And yeah. It's such, you can use com- coincidence to get into bad situations, but they just use it contrivances to get out of it and kind of go, "Well, this per- sure this person did this horrible thing, but huh. I was I was spoken I spoke to a guy who who worked on it quite a bit, and then uh, I'm not going to talk about the the details of what happened and why he ended up leaving, but there were a lot of problems and a lot of terrible people pushing terrible ideas, and just were terrible people in general. Mm. Like on that series, and I think uh, that comes through. <laughs> it comes through. It's such sloppy writing, but, and that really I, comes through in that Picard one, where it feels like it's just a, it feels like it's a Patrick Stewart vanity project. Yeah, and it, it's not. But, but they asked him to be on it. They're like, "Hey, do you want to do a Patrick Stewart vanity project?" And he's like, "I guess." But it's not Picard. Like it's just, he plays a different character. Yeah, it's not Picard at all, and it's not Star Trek. Uh, the Federation isn't. Federation, everyone behaves so unprofessionally. They're so mean to each and other. Mean, yeah, and, <laughs> and there's all this rude. weird that politics. It's the, like, yeah. hey, what if Trump? <laughs> uh, and it's like, uh, Star Trek's always been optimistic. That's part of the good thing about it. Yeah. But it's like, no, the Federation is bad now. And you're mm. like, 
Nah, oh, man. <laughs> nah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but and then, of course, it was cancelled uh, for various reasons. But then the animated series brought back all the cast in mm-hmm. 1973 to 75. I remember watching a bit of it as a kid. You know, they're rerunning things, and I'm like, I fucking hate this. Mm. This is awful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. But they brought back everyone primarily due to Leonard Nimoy. Right, okay. Who was like, I'm not doing it if you don't get the core cast back. Mm. I'm just not doing it. And they yeah. were like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're going to do and that. And sure, you could get Casey Kasem to do all the voices. but They didn't? No. Oh, yeah. no, it's different. I, I, I remember seeing a, uh, uh, so one of the crew members fell in love with a squid that turned into a person or something. Um, I don't know. Yeah. it's uh, I, don't, I think the art style is quite unique and it's obviously very kind of basic mm. for, for the year. It's very minimal and... Mouths barely moving and people yeah. barely walking. It's just, it's just, it's just kind of unpleasant, though. <laughs> it is unpleasant to, for the eyes. Um, <laughs> but that's then, difficult for TV. You know, yeah, you want a TV show, not should be easy on the eyes, I think. And I then agree. quite some time went by because there was supposed to be the uh, the phase two, right? Mm. Uh, that the ser- they were going to revive the series, but then of course because Star Wars got big, they went, oh, hang on, we could movie, we could do a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And they made Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. I would love to know your opinion on Star Trek. The and it is picture. one of the most singular, boring pieces <laughs> yes. of cinema ever <laughs> Strong created. Strong agreed. But it was – people loved it because it was really good special effects at the time. Yeah. But the special effects looked like a Winamp – uh, music visualizer. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it really kicks the llama's ass. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it. I've seen obviously clips. I love the aesthetic of it, like the uniforms yeah. and all of that. They redo this. They redo, you yeah. know, and refit it's the big, Enterprise. It's and, a big idea. And, yeah. Yeah, and the, the Enterprise sort of goes into the heart of this It just sucks entity, so much. And it's just, but, yeah, the, the, going into it takes... To, to so us. it's just yeah. so long yeah. of these like now extremely bad yeah 3D VFX animation stuff. Um, it, it feels more like 2001: A Space Odyssey than like Star Wars. I would say from what I'm yeah again, it goes longer than that. The end sequence of 2001. <laughs> it's really tedious, and it's got this love story between this bald lady and who's got a light in her neck, and the, and the and the, and this the captain at the time, or, and the sex offender from uh, Seventh Heaven. No. Yeah. Oh, the dad from Seventh. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. Yep. So he's the new captain, is he? Well, he's the captain that Kirk takes over. Oh, okay. Gotcha, so gotcha. Kirk's an admiral. He comes back and he's like, I'm taking off the Enterprise. <laughs> oh, he's done it. <laughs> I'm taking over the Enterprise. It's fine. <laughs> and uh, Spock has take undertaken the Colonar, which is the purging of emotions. Oh, okay. And uh, it's not good. Okay. But. But it did really well. Mm. It did well enough that they got. So some more sequels, and that's where we get into the good stuff, gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely, the magic finally, bam! We get into oh, what's that? Oh, s- fuck it, Wrath of Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign me up, baby. It was good to see a continuation of Encounter at Farpoint. We all agree with that, isn't? It? Don't we, James? James, you're killing me, <laughs> James. God, James, James, you are literally killing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally stabbing me. Hey, in it's the my face. show. That's- <laughs> there's, a, there's a song by The Weeknd, and there's a line in it where he talks he, he, something. It's it's a Star Trek reference, and he calls it the Wraith of Khan. Oh. Or like, who who wrote this? Yeah. The Weeknd. What are you yeah. doing? You're yeah, we killing can. us. Check it. He changes it. When Get he some fact it. check. Oh, maybe he does it when he does it live. Yeah. He's yeah. like, he pauses and goes, "Wrath of Khan." He waits for the round of yeah. applause. It's his. Let's get it started. And in England, yeah. He oh, goes, yeah, yeah. And in England, he goes, "The Wrath of Khan." <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, this is generally considered to be the best movie, would you say? Or what? Oh, definitely. Oh, top yeah, three. it's considered to be kind of the classic. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the best of the classics, you know. It's, what they um, tried to replicate, basically. Uh, yeah. A lot since. Mm. Yeah, and it was, it, it was very good. And it was shot really well. And the special effects are kind of dated, but also really kind of hold up. Mm. They lean into the more submarine vibe. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Of the Enterprise, which I think works like an absolute treat. Yeah, and yeah. I absolutely love when they do that. Mm. Um, it's just really good. Mm. They do the – they go into – you know, there's that great scene where they're in the nebula and they're sort of hunting each other without sensors or anything like that. And it's mm. it's just a very good sort of – it's a great story. It's a great movie. Yeah. Um, all the elements are there. Chekhov and, gets that worm in his ear. Yeah, Chekhov gets the yeah, worm. But then he bay. I also, I love though, uh, genuinely, that it is an idea 
that they brought forward. Mm. Not that they did again. They went, hey, remember that thing that we did in that one-off episode? Yeah. That's come back to Horde to sit in a very big way. Yeah. I think that's really cool as a concept. Ricardo you know, Montalban, Montalban yeah, the is... the chest. Is oh. that a fake chest? I know, it's a real chest, I believe. I'm loving that. It is. <laughs> he's so good in it. It's just packed full of quotable lines. Yeah. So... And they don't share any screen time, is that correct? Kirk I don't think and, they do. Um, they're always apart. Yeah. But they're at each other, you know? Mm, that's right. It's great. It's really good. And that leads directly on yeah. well, Naked Gun. Gun. To Naked Gun. Because Ricardo Montalban's in that. Yep. Is he? He's in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI. Yeah, the one of you would have more information. No, no, no. That's, that's your thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Naked okay. Gun's your thing. I'm going to do some research then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they kill Spock. Yep. Uh, it was supposed to be for a while, wasn't it? That was the idea. Yeah, and they redo it in uh, Into the Darkness, but they switch it around so it makes yeah. no fucking sense. They have that blood that can bring anything. They just back invented the that. Real yeah. JJ Ed. Abram's like, oh, here's magic to solve this problem that I got myself in that I'm not clever enough. Oh, he to also did magic about. blood in the TV series Heroes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So. He also had Zachary Quinto. Oh, yeah, it did too. Where, where Zachary Quinto says, give me the heal anything blood. So bad. That's no, no good. That's great so though. Terrible. But you'd no, need that, I reckon. Okay, so also wasn't it? It was leaked that Spock was going to die. So they put that scene. In, they put that scene in the start where he dies in a simulation. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. And then he. And then and then they kill him for the real. Kobayashi Maru. Very good. Uh, and but yeah. Then the next movie is obviously about bringing him back. And, he's and like, it's oh, mm. not as good, but it's still good. It's okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty I sure it. I've seen it. Christopher Lloyd is a Klingon. Yeah, that's kind of enjoyable. Mm. Spock's yeah. son, mm. which is good. and Is Kirk's son in that one? Does he get murdered? Yeah, that, that oh, sorry, yeah. not Spock's son, Kirk's son. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Don't tweet me, please. <laughs> I will. I'm going to be doing Don't. that <laughs> right after the and, show. Uh, yeah, so Spock's, uh, Kirk's son's in there. And spoiler alert for a movie that was made years ago. 1984. He, Spock, uh, Kirk's son dies. Oh, no. Yep. He seems all right, though, in the next movie. They should have put him back on that planet. Yeah, you, that, that's a great. Or heal anything the, planet. You <laughs> should have put him on the heal anything planet. Yeah, so for, and this is where the sort of movie Spock regenerates. They shoot him into Genesis at the end of yeah, the and they use a big movie. computer graphic. Yeah, I remember on the screen being impressed by the computer graphic. And then the heal the planet because it's all generated. It's all made man made the planet. Yeah, from the Genesis device. Yes, it's also affecting Spock. And it heals him and makes him new, but he doesn't really remember everything yet because he put his mind into McCoy. Was that intentional that they put that in that movie to do that later? Or was I it, assume it, so, it, yeah. It, yeah, okay, cool. Because it, was, it wasn't something they just did in passing and then, yeah. yeah. It's yeah quite oh, good. He, he made a copy, I assume, because he, otherwise he would have yeah, just yeah. dropped dead. He's he put his katra. <laughs> yes. Very it's good. mystical Vulcan things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do a lot of that, don't mm, they? A lot mm. of sitting and staring and touching each other's faces. Yeah. Uh, and then, well, the, and that's <clears throat> one of the then one of the favorite ones of people is the yes. voyage home. This one did. This is one of the most successful. And Star one Trek's of the, the silliest, time. or the kind of concept it's goofy, at least. It's yes, fun. yes. I, I didn't mean that in a bad way. No, no, not seems at all. like you meant it in a bad. way. I, I love did, it actually. when Star Trek goes a bit goofy, mm-hmm. and I think that's part of the reason why I love the new Strange New Worlds because they've got a good goofy episode in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's which I mean. adore. Yeah, I just love it because I want to know. This is what. Uh, sorry, I'm jumping around, but no, please. Star Trek. This episode of Strange New World that I'm talking about. Gives you a glimpse into just like the everyday of mm. a, a starship, and that's what I'm kind of the most interested in. That's why I, I like below desk decks as well. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's kind of lower fun. decks don't add lower, it. Lower, <laughs> yeah, don't below deck. Don't have Below deck is a reality television show on Bravo, and we can talk about that if you want. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> is that on a cruise ship? Is it a yeah, reality show? On a, yeah, okay, on a right. charter charter ship. It's a lot like Star Trek in Does many that ways. That show keep going even during COVID. Yeah. That's madness. Oh, that was below deck. It's fine. Oh, okay. Can't get you below deck. Can't get you below deck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Anyway, well, the fuck was I talking about before? Boy show. Funny. Silly. And the ground, the Mm. conversation. Whales. Yes, whales. Time travel. Time travel. Mm. Whales don't exist in the the future because we whaled them to death. That's right. Mm. And so they... They brought back that guy for Picard, didn't they? The guy on the bus. Oh, yeah. Great. Lame. The, what, the punk on the bus? Yeah, he's, yeah. In, he's on oh, no. the same thing. Isn't I, didn't real, finish, I didn't finish Picard. Really so. egregious fan service. <laughs> so the guy, because on the Voyager, they go, the, the the crew go on a bus and there's the guy playing the punk music yeah, really yeah. loud him, and Spock nerve pinches him. Yeah. So that guy's back. Is Cause it? Cause the they're fun, guy. And oh I'm like, God. oh, As man. the same character? Yeah. Oh my Kirk God. and Spock are narcs? 
<laughs> yeah. Dude, you're fucking square, man. He was quite up. rude, though, that man. He did not give, to... give him the big finger. He did give him the American finger. <laughs> yeah. The... He gave <laughs> him, God, the 70s American finger where you got to bend you all the angles up. up. Yeah. The four fit. So, yeah. That's the other ones were up just halfway. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. See if you can do it at home, listen. Oh, that's, right that's like doing Can You Do the Vulcan Salute? Not oh. everybody can do it. Yeah. At us with the American rude finger. Yeah, give us an give me an American rude finger. So they brought that actor back. He's the same character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's oh. a bu- and they're on a bus. It's the yeah. same, right? Oh. Yeah, he's, I think he's dressed the same or yeah. similarly. Yeah, but isn't that shit set in like twenty twenty four or something? They yeah. do they do a big time travel, yeah, uh, and he, he's still alive because it's the eighties and it's like it's really not worth later. thinking about. Yeah, oh, okay, but I want to do now. I want to do nothing to think about. You have to think about it, but you can uh, think about it on your own. So he's time. still he's maintained his crusty punk aesthetic. It seems yeah. that way, yeah, for, for, for yeah. decades. But like he, most things in that season of Picard, best not to. Okay, right. Dwell or give any kind of thought or any, you know, real deconstruction to anything. I'll do my own research, and, <laughs> and just to be just in, in the spirit of um, Here we bloody research, Here we, bloody um, we cut a Malta Bun, played Vincent Ludwig in Naked Gun 1. Was his so, chest real in that? I don't think he sees chest. Get back on your phone. Okay. <laughs> Give me a picture of his chest. Uh, and then we had Final Frontier, Undiscovered Country. Anything in particular? Uh, Final Frontier, skin- because so because uh, Leonard Nimoy had directed yeah. a bunch of the movies mm. uh, and was quite successful at it. Mm-hmm. Kirk was like, uh, well, William Shatner was like, I want to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's going to be me. And uh, directs number five, which is widely considered d- definitely one of the two worst Star mm. Trek films. Yeah. It is incoherent. It doesn't make any sense. You've got a secret brother of Spock called Cybok. He's got a lot of secret siblings, that yeah, guy. You've got, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's too much. <laughs> they go on the hunt for God, is that? Is they they go on the hunt for God. Yeah. They run into huge production problems mm. in this. In the, in the film, movie? In the movie. <laughs> yeah. We do, do not have the budget to find God, honestly. <laughs> no. It's a, it's a nightmare. Is it? Does the vanity of it shine through as well? Or does it not like? Does it feel like a Kirk focused endeavor <sighs> no, enterprise, if you will? Not, not too much. Mm. It just doesn't make any sense. The best bit of the film, it's got good elements. In sure, it. Yeah. like it's got great scenes between Core Three, McCoy, Spock, and Kirk. Mm. But it just kind of fall. Everything, all that goodwill is constantly sabotaged. And undercut by an incredibly poor script, right? Yeah, uh, bad v- VFX. Because mm. yeah. I think the problem, like I'd imagine, without looking at the numbers, the box office would have been on the decline. It was they would have been looking for ways to cut. It was a cost. huge bomb. Yeah, box office, and, and and it had every right to be a huge bomb. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Unlike Star Trek The Motion Picture, which was boring but did really well. <laughs> yes. This was boring but did very badly. The universe sorted itself out. God it probably did. intervened and was like, yeah. no, yeah. a little bit of fairness. So that's that's a that's a terrible film. Mm. Uh, maybe one for a, car- a caravan of garbage. We've only ever done Generations. Which anyway, they did the undiscovered country just quickly. Anything? Undiscovered country, one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, that's a, <laughs> there's yeah. no time there. I, there's all, there's I love the time. Discovery. Uh, Undiscovered Country, sort of an allegory between this the one? fall of the Berlin Wall. Okay. So it's about... Uh, the... Hasselhoff's in it? Is he? No, I don't know. He's in, he was at the oh, wall. yeah, sorry. Oh, I missed that <laughs> reference, but it was a very clever reference. Ben. Thanks. <laughs> I think you're very brave for saying that. <laughs> yeah, so it's about the Klingons. They can't afford to be at war with the Federation anymore because of some industrial disaster, like a Chernobyl, perhaps. Oh, wow. And they uh, make peace with, with Federation. They've got the Kittimer, the Kittimer Accords. Uh, and, of course, there's, like, rogue generals on either side that try oh, and stop them because they love war. So this uh, is – I didn't realize – yeah, this is the same director, Nicholas Meyer, as – Star Trek Wrath of Khan. So I guess that makes ah. sense that this is something yeah. as opposed to nothing. <laughs> I think, yes. I mean, Wrath of Khan, for me, Wrath of Khan and Undiscovered Country are my favourites mm. of the original cast in the movies. Yeah. I think it's just, it's just a great, everyone does a great job. The The special effects are good. Mm. It's got some great scenes. It's fun. It's a little bit pokey. Does it's, it feel like a send-off as well? Yeah, it yeah. feels like a good send-off. That's fine. Mm. And then they go, uh-uh-uh. Mm. We got Generations. Which came at the tail end of 
with that other one. Yeah, so Star Trek Next Generation, <laughs> it started, uh, was well and truly What's started. What's the first episode of that show called? Does anybody know? Nobody I knows. I think it's called C- Space Sea. <laughs> okay, cool. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, I mean, this was, people consider this like the gold standard, right? Or not everybody. The, the, no, the series, yeah, who, right? James? Oh, who? He's always saying things Next on this Gen? podcast. Uh, yeah, Next Gen. Yeah, I mean, Next Gen is a great. It's so watchable. To me, it's, it is like Seinfeld, where it's if I'm going to be doing some cooking, I'll put it on the TV, or if yep. I j- am really hungover, I'll put that on the TV. You know, it's just a good thing that you can just let it wash over you. And yeah. there's so many episodes, and you can just uh, – there's there's a lot of bad episodes in it. Yeah, sure. In the first two – you know, in the first season. It's pretty rough. Uh, right? yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of dudes wearing skirts. That's fun. Uh, which is fun, but it's like they're really high miniskirts. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's strange. It's a strange <laughs> choice. And I know what he was doing. Like he was trying to – it was that, you know – Yeah, there's like a gender fluidity yeah, gender the fluid, future. You know, and, and, yeah. it, and it does explore a lot of those themes mm. and it doesn't quite, you know, to varying degrees of heaviness and, and sort of subtlety. And Roddenberry was involved with a lot of this, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then uh, I believe he eventually died around while doing Next Gen. Right. Yeah, they just had great writers. They had really good writers and they it was a brutal schedule of shooting. Yeah, everybody seemed real unhappy a lot of the time yeah. <laughs> in that show. Um, yeah. But it was – it has some – The characters. I think there's a lot of ch- – there's, there's still chaff in the series as a whole, but there's – it's better than the sum of its parts, mm. I believe. So, I, I, you know, it's just a – it's just an enjoyable time to binge and just have on in the background. And yeah, absolutely. You're there's a fan. some really good ones. I'm, I'm more of a Deep Space Nine guy, but I, I do yeah. I do remember I well, do I do remember the thrill of watching uh, of of the you know the the big lead up to Encounter at Farpoint oh, yeah. on uh, on Channel Nine the, the premiere. I'm like this is this is it's very it's exciting. And I think Star Trek has, uh, Next Gen has the best finale of okay. the series. Yeah, uh, their their finale, a few good things. Is oh, not um not the last movie. No, no, no. <laughs> with Tom Hardy. Is it a few good things? No, no. It's uh, yeah, it's it's something, something like, like that. that, yeah. Yeah, but okay. it's a very all good, good finale. All, all good, good things. things. Very good finale. Absolutely love it. Probably the best of all the Star Treks in terms of finales. Mm. Yeah. So that that was happening, and so they were like generations. Let's get that happening. Yeah, I don't think that's great. I think it's in not. terms of getting two captains together, that should be something, and it's not really. It's not good, but it's not as bad as what I remember it. Okay, sure. I think it has some. Redeeming qualities. Of yeah, it. fair enough. I think Malcolm the, McDowell. Yeah, Malcolm McDowell. I think the oh, all the Nexus stuff is a little tedious, and um, <laughs> I don't think that the I think the data with the emotional chip is kind of dumb. Was that that one? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. It's nice to see a captain riding a horse, though. I think maybe that's what. Yeah, I think it's. Do you think fun. they should do more of that? I think they should do more of it. Well, they did it in Strange <laughs> New Worlds, and that was great. Yeah. Uh, just to qu- very quickly touch on the movie, so it's Generation First Contact, Insurrection, Nemesis. Yep. I, I think... Insurrection, not bad. I don't mind Insurrection. And it does, that again feels like a, it feels like a, like a one-off episode. Like it's not yeah. connected to anything else. It's very not, much a one-off. It's not end of the galaxy state. Is that the one where they go to the planet and they all start getting younger? It's yes. feel Yeah. Okay. The, I think the main problems that I have with it are the like... Uh, Whole food customers that are all the people that live on the planet. <laughs> yeah. They just they're just like we just like green smoothies and don't like. They're definitely anti vaxxers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like they don't work out. It's just the they're some of the worst alien species are ever on trek. Yeah, uh, and it just happens to be terrible because they're near some magic rocks or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> they're just fucking. And then they've got this magic power to slow down shit or something. I don't. It's it, they're dumb. Yeah, they. I don't root for them. I I root for the Sona sometimes. Absolutely, uh, but it's got the guy. It, is it? Uh, who's the bad guy in it? It's big stretchy face man. Yeah, is it? Is it the man that's not Ben Kingsley? It's F. Oh, Murray Abraham. Yeah, absolutely right. It is. Yeah, he's from. Um, uh, is that the Apple Plus show about the yep. video game thing? Yeah, that one. Not don't Dragon know. something. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah, he's really good in it. Yeah. Um, everyone does a relatively good job at it. I like the. Yeah, there's some good elements. Yeah. It's it's stupid, but it's kind of fun. The the manual control for the Enterprise is controlled by uh I think a like a Logitech flight stick, uh, flight stick or <laughs> something like that. Um Oh, that's good. I think the problem that that movie had is that it came off the back of First Contact, which is widely considered to be the best, like especially the best. It's definitely the best gen like next gen yeah. movie. Yeah. It's action packed, it's got body horror, it's got excellent character beats. Mm. It's that, just a genuinely 
excellent film. You could watch that. An yeah. amazing special effects. Oh, completely. And you Whereas could... in, in Insurrection, they switched from industri- industrial light and magic to the people that were doing the special effects of Voyager. Oh, that makes sense. And uh, they were the doing... special effects for Voyager kind of <laughs> suck. Yeah, because so. they would have been doing Star Wars, so that makes yeah. sense around that time. And then Nemesis is a big pile of crap. Nemesis has right. amazing special effects. Oh, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. It's apps. It's not a Star Trek film. Mm. It feels like a, yeah. It feels like a Die Hard. You know how all Die Hards are just kind of scripts that were lying around. They're like, let's retool yeah. this to be a Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels like that, mm. and it it it. They just. It's not Star Trek. Mm. I don't believe. Not yeah. my Star Trek. It's not my Star Trek. Thank it's God not, they. They kind of miss it. Good they thing really they brought them all it. back though. Then you know. It's it's <laughs> for it's form over function. Yeah, in the truest sense of the word, and that it it, it looks fancy. Mm. And really looks w- very wonderful. slick. Lots of neon from yeah. memory on the posters, at least. But there's no substance in yeah. there whatsoever. Yeah, it's really stupid. And yeah. the fact that they just kind of make up this alien race that's been on Romulan, like part of Romulan Empire for the whole time. That why is the Romulan Empire so close to the Rome Roman Empire? It's weird, isn't They've it? They got Romulus and Remus. <laughs> it's a great question. Everything's re- like lifted from ancient Rome. That's maybe they were looking at them through a big telescope. Uh, mm. I, I suspect it. Kind it just <laughs> wait. Who was doing the looking? The Romulans. Earth or, okay, the Romulans. Oh were. yeah, I don't think it could go the other way, could it? Yeah. <laughs> it's I just suspect. yeah. It's a terrible film. Yeah, and it yeah. kind of killed the and it killed the franchise. Well, yeah, so there was Voyager and... But nothing movies. can kill intellectual property no, these days. No. Uh, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, people love those. Anything to say in particular, these are not my Deep areas. Space Nine is my personal yes. favourite. Mm, same. And Benjamin Sisko is my personal favourite captain. Yeah. Why are they doing anything with any of that then? I don't know. He's real. Well, because it came to a... It was a their first kind of trial of having a through line. Still episodic. Mm, they do it really yeah. well, but they have a through line through a lot of their later series... The the series as a whole is sort of has a slow start, mm. but tackles some really cool things, especially about religion, because you've got the the really religious Bajorans, and then you know they've got this sort of the Cardassians are a really good villain. It's just got some excellent elements in there. Yeah, and then by season at the start of season four, the I would say that's when the series is at the best. Right, right. So they bring on Worf. He's back. They develop. Uh, Garrick, who's my favorite mm. character there, is, and they really do some great relationship work with yeah. the characters. Some of the characters that were kind of lacking and taking pulling the show down, I would say, start to get developed. Like, um, oh, they didn't, Dr. They didn't Bashir. just cut him. No, <laughs> <They actually laughs> Dr. Bashir work. kind of gets a lot more okay. to do because he was kind of like, Who are you, dude? Yeah, and they, they, I think that they. They lift him up by exploring the relate, like the friendship between him and Chief O'Brien, who's a wonderful character that they love to torture. And a, and a union man. <laughs> and a <laughs> union man, yeah. <laughs> they love to torture uh, Chief O'Brien. And he has terrible things happen to him. Yeah, it's just really good stuff. The pro, I think it's a shame because it ran into Brennan Braga problems, allegedly. What's it, what, what do you Brennan mean? Brennan Braga that? was the EP for Star Trek at the time. Okay. And he also... I believe turned out to be quite a mean, nasty person, uh, okay. and uh, there was some. He was not good to a lot of the 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 women on set. Right. Okay. And um, he ran into some. I think him and especially Terry Terry Far- Farrell, Terry Farrell, who played Jadzia Dax. Mm. <laughs> they did not. They did not like each other. Is that right. why she quit the show? Yeah, she eventually got quit the show, right. and they had to replace her with Esri Dax. Uh, Actor that did a great Canadian actor that did a great job, but just was never. They just didn't have the time or resources to give her what she needed to be a memorable or valuable mm. character. And yeah, they right. ran out. They ran out of budget for doing all the dacking. Yeah, and that's the there's no dacking. Wow. The core of Jadzia and Ezri Dax is how many yeah. dacking. How many <laughs> dax? Yeah. yeah, so that's crazy. Uh, spoiler alert: lots of dax. Lots, lots of dax. dax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, I wonder if the the reason that the characters haven't come back into the mainstream is because they don't have an enterprise or they had, mm. they had, okay. it, it yeah. was they always, had the defiant. they had the defiant eventually. Cause they were like, we need, we need to go places and do stuff and shoot yeah. stuff with lasers. But that's right. Lasers. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think like it's, fire it's, laser. It's, it's way easier to put on a poster. Like, Oh, there's the enterprise. Like all the other ones have the through line of like, yeah. look at the enterprise and look, look how it looks now. And isn't that cool? But yeah. Like deep space nine. It's just like little, 
like a like a crab in space. Look at this. Well, crab I think in that space. The, the, I love the the design, of mm. but Deep it's space but it's not like an iconic thing you <clears throat> no. put on a whatever. I guess. yeah, uh, Voyager. Voyager. Mm-hmm. Voyager was good. Voyager's back as well, sort of, isn't it? Yeah, animated kind of in that weird show. animated show. I haven't seen any of that. It, I watched second. one or two episodes and I was like, I'm good. Mm. <laughs> I'm good because I love this. Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm having a good no, time. it's for kids. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, absolutely. And it just wasn't. I was mm. like, this isn't for me. That's fine. And then Enterprise, uh, you mentioned just before we started recording that season three is good. But the season rest of three it, is good. Yeah. They have a good, again, they go for a good through line. It's got some great moments. Mm. They just, they criminally ignore a lot of the core cast. To 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 what end? They just so, run out of room for them. But like, oh, so they what are they? Who just are they to, focusing on though? They focus on on all like they focus on sort of to Paul Archer Trip, who's a great character, turns mm. into a great character, and um and the Doctor, who's also a really good character. Everyone else kind of falls by the wayside. The the security uh, officer, I forget his name because he's so forgettable, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and the helmsman, the poor helmsman, he never gets a shot. Yeah, yeah, it's real sad. <laughs> they just didn't give. I don't just know what they did. They just didn't write a every week. He'd come into the, every, every week. He'd come into the, the yeah. for the script read. He'd be like, "Where's my one?" He's line? a glorified extra by you know oh, by wow. the m- middle of season one. Really, oh, that's rough. Um, they and, just don't have anything to do. And then with it him. it ends with an episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation, <laughs> doesn't it? Don't they do a weird? Oh yes, it's awful. <laughs> a flash? No, they're getting a yeah. So season four. Yeah. The finale is Riker in a holodeck. Right. And he's been watching it the whole time. <laughs> like he's been, it's us, been the a dream the yeah. whole time. And so he doesn't interact with them or he does interact? He doesn't with interact with them. But he's just like, this was. This has been a great series. Yeah. That I've been watching. He's just been binging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, uh, what are you, depressed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've seen Picard and yes. Don't you have like a lady on the holodeck to fuck or something? <laughs> he loves him. Riker is the horniest. It's true. Don't you have some. Look how he mounts that shit. Don't you have some yeah. weird curios in your Ripley's Believe It or Not so yeah. set? <laughs> it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Nope. It, <laughs> See, I don't. I I never got to the good seasons of Enterprise because every the first season I watched it was just every major crew member getting kidnapped every week. I remember yeah, trying it, was, it and yeah. being like, "No, this isn't for it, me." Yeah. yeah, and I didn't like the uniforms. It had some good mm. ideas. I think the fact that they were so the ship was such a kind of a rattler. Like, yeah, but they never they never catalyzed. They never really explored how isolated it was and how they were alone. You mm. know. And the, the ship was falling apart with, you know, limited resources. They it was just like another trek. It just looked and great. Like, what are <laughs> we like, doing here? Yeah, now? Yeah. What's the point of this? It yeah. just had no point. It was retelling stories that had already been told before mm. on Star Trek. They weren't. They weren't talking like they weren't exploring the thing that made it interesting or unique. And the fact that it was kind of the start of the the Federation. Mm. I mean, that's interesting. Yes. You're isolated. You're the underdog. You know, you're the weakest ship in the in space. Mm. Uh, but they never, ever, they rarely talked about that one. That's a shame. Yeah, and then it, it is a shame. And then it died. For... They kind of did the same thing with that as they did with Voyager, whereas Voyager is right. alone and it's isolated, but the ship is fine. Yes. They, sure, they've got Neelix, who is the most annoying character in all of Star Trek, there to cook. For some reason, but there's never really any. Oh yeah, sacrifice. why they cook it? What's that? I don't know. There's never any real sacrifice <laughs> that they have to make. Yeah. Rarely, we have to sacrifice one crew member a week for Neelix's cooking. The ship cooking. never <laughs> degrades over time. It's just the same because I think by Voyager they were just not doing any through lines, and then by the time of season three Enterprise, they are like, we're going to get cancelled. Yeah, we know it. No one's watching this shit. Okay. Let's uh, sexually exploit to Paul and Mm -hmm. in every chance we get and we'll just do the plots that we want to do. It's like we're about to get cancelled. Let's do what, you know, a Mr. Oily. Mm, Sure, yeah. Yes. Uh, (laughs) In the biz. Uh, (laughs) That is a classic Australian comedy industry term on TV. Could you explain Mr. Oily? Okay, so (laughs) a friend of ours... Uh, their, his show was getting cancelled. Yeah, tonight. And they knew that. Yeah, the Tonightly mm. was getting cancelled. They knew it was getting cancelled. So they were like, "Okay, we're putting on Mr. Oily," which was just my friend uh, Greg Larson just writhing around in oil. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to make a political point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. To make so a point. they were just like, let's just do this. Let's yeah. just do what we want. Let's do through a through line, and it was, and it's good. Right. That's interesting. But then it kind of falls apart yeah. in went, season four. We used all our ideas. Yeah, they <laughs> and used all our oils, And we're still certainly. here. Yeah, so. it was kind of like they were like, oh, we're not cancelled. Oh. Mm. Uh, nah. Yeah. Don't know. If somebody could mock up out there, one of the listeners, if they could mock up maybe like an Enterprise view screen and they're looking down on a planet and it's just <laughs> Mr. Oily riding around. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, Some plastic stuff. sheeting. That would be great. Yeah. Now that. I will respond to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to quickly mention uh, Galaxy Quest. I know yeah. it's not Star Trek, but I feel like Ben Russell would get yelled is. at if we don't mention it. I love it. It's Galaxy. amazing, right? I, I mm. Going into that, I'm like, I don't, who cares? Why would you even make this? But God damn, it's, it's so, so good. good. Yeah. Mm. So it should funny. be a Star Trek. Yeah, Tim Allen is like like the perfect like parallel, yeah. You know, it's just it, it's incredible. You know, what? I should love be a Star the... Trek guys. The Orville. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Just kidding. Just shut <laughs> I'm up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if anyone, so many people are like, because I, you know, obviously I'm outspoken about how much I of my dislike of Discovery and Picard, and they're like, you should check out the Orville. And I'm like, you know, I would do that if <laughs> I didn't have to listen to that fucking voice of Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> oh my god, it's like gone chalk. It's nails on a chalkboard for me. Speaking of vanity projects. That's that being really said, please give me a job, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, yeah, I mean, from what I've seen of it, I don't mind it. I'm like, this is I'm all right. Man. This is like, you know, it's. I think it's good. Like the yeah. writing is good. Mm. I just. Uh, you think him as a captain. I find his, the way that he speaks is, and this isn't it, but he's always very like, just be yourself, man. Yeah. Like I want to see the real Seth MacFarlane. I, I saw a. It always feels like he's. Got a, mm. He's got a wall up, and I want let me in. Yeah, you, yeah, I get that. Is that is that because he's a well, golden years of Hollywood song and dance man, and he's always putting up a persona? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know because I, I, I want to see some vulnerability I, in Seth MacFarlane. It's mm. interesting you say that because I saw a wide auto complete thing, and he said that the what he wanted to do with that captain was he's like an everyday man who's put into that role. But I never really got that sense that he is an everyday no. man. Like if he was like a. Uh, like what am I doing kind of thing. I think that would be more interesting than this kind of bluster that, you know, you're talking about. Yeah, I think mm. his helmsman is more of an everyday man. Yeah. To play, that's a, he's a great character. Yeah, they're always like, let's have a brew. Yeah. You know, and that's an everyday man. But Seth MacFarlane <laughs> is always so performative. I mm. don't, I don't, I find it difficult to ever believe his characters mm. okay. because he's so like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, oh, there's, uh-oh. I'm going to do a little one-liner here that you can see coming a mile away. Watch out. <laughs> okay. I'm emoting. I think, you know, I want him to, I want him to let me in, brother. Yeah. Um, you know? You want to hold him. I want to hold him. And yeah. I want to kiss him. Mm. And I want to say everything's going to be okay, Seth. I think he'd like that. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I reckon we-, we can, I reckon we can get him an Oscar. What do you think? Us yeah. in this room? We can get him an Oscar yeah, if, we, if it, yeah. we just if he just lets us in. We shake him and we be like, "Be real, Seth yeah. MacFarlane. We're gonna get you a fucking uncut gems mm. times that's a it. thousand. That's interesting. Him We're doing gonna... an uncut gems. Oh, I would be curious. I would also be curious. I wonder what that would sound like, Seth MacFarlane doing <laughs> uncut gems. Oh, I'm gonna come. <laughs> This is how I win. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, they rebooted it. We've talked about this before, but the way they kind of uh, promoted Star Trek 2009 was it's like, I'm a normal person and I like this movie. I'm not an awful nerd. Like that I'm, was... I'm a nerd coming out of the cinema. This was actually all right, I yeah. thought. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of that. It's yeah. like it's accessible Star they Trek. They brought back the, yeah. the post-viewing of a movie interview yeah, and yeah, I yeah, think campaigns. That's kind of what Star Trek needed. Like I It agree. really needed, J- it needed that J.J. populist touch. And then? Maybe just step away. Yeah, know? maybe step away. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't do Into the Darkness. Maybe don't do that. But um, yeah, but, but I mean, we talked about these already. But yeah, but yeah, the, I, I think uh, I think, and the same thing of the Force Awakens. Mm. I understand why it does the things that it does. It's it's doing a lot of things that have been done before, yeah. and it's like very fast paced. But it's also for new people. So almost, I I, yeah. get, I understand why you would do something like that. And yeah, why but it then works. don't keep going. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> JJ yeah. Abrams just. Stop. <laughs> but then you know, and and then beyond is is good, but did not it did. I don't think it did as well as they'd hoped. Mm. But it's still a very good film. I would say I love it. It's yeah. a nice action film. It's yeah. I I I got such a big boner for Carl Urban. Oh yeah. Mm. That 
I, he can kind of do whatever he wants and I will love it. Yeah. You know, I just think that he's wonderful. He's fun and he's yeah. great in Chronicles of Riddick. He's great in Chronicles of Riddick. He's great in <laughs> anything. He, he is. No, he, he gives 110% uh, in anything. Yeah. There was a show that he did where he was a cop and he teamed up with like an AI robot man from like 2012. <laughs> I loved it. That's uh, it. Was, it was, well, they went for like four episodes, but anyway. Anyways. Even, even you know, the boys, his accent. Maybe not the tightest English uh, doesn't Cockney matter accent. At all. Doesn't matter. It never takes me out because I'm like, yeah, yeah, Urban. I believe this guy. Yeah, I think the best season four Kiss reveal me. for that show would be if he just reveals he is just from New Zealand. <laughs> hey guys, I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and then Anthony Starr goes, I'm from New Zealand too. <laughs> <laughs> the it's <suck. laughs> But I think they're. I'd, I'd imagine at Paramount. I think they're struggling with. How do you justify a budget for the next Star Trek movie? You've got to pay everybody in it so much. And then mm-hmm. if they were going to bring in Hemsworth, which I think they should, yeah. that's the return on that might not necessarily be there. Yeah, um, I think I uh, the way that what I've read is that because of the sort of less than what expected return from beyond, mm. they gave it a lower budget. And then Hemsworth is like, nah. Mm. I've got to pay for all of Byron. <laughs> I bought the entirety of Byron. What do you think? What do you think? This costs money. <laughs> the app doesn't cover it. I've got to make the interceptor <laughs> for my wife. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we, we quickly, we, we talked about Discovery. Uh, it's still going. I, um, so now we're going to talk about yes. the Star Trek 25th anniversary point and click adventure game for PC. Oh, let's. Which one's that one? Oh, it's like a, it's like a, I'll show, I'll show you. Oh, here we go. I, I played the, uh, the Generations computer game. Yeah, I've played, oh. I've played that. Is that the, you run around on a planet and you got your crew and whatever, right? Yeah, it's like a really janky, uh, yeah. like first person oh, thing. This was a, puzzle a um, and shooter thing. This was a PC game and it was, uh, based around the original series. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there were, there were like point and click adventures a la Monkey Island, mm-hmm. but they were also like, like, Bridge crew like uh, shooting. Oh, yeah. oh, that's fun. I think I played that one. Oh, you should, you should, you should. I played a lot of uh, uh, Star the Armada Star Trek Armada. Oh, yes. uh-huh. the, Is that an RTS? The, yeah, the RTS one, yeah. the Armada two. Mm. And I played the first person shooter Voyager one. That's good, one isn't and it? Two. That's they're quite good. Yeah. And I played a bit of Klingon Academy. That's jank. That's jank AF. Ah. Look how look how defined and muscular those boys Ooh, are. Oh my goodness, that's they're, real. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. That's just based on photographs. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's a what's a couple other ones? I used to. I we played the uh, the the Star Trek 2009 video game. It's like a co op shooter. You Kirk it's and like, Spock. Yeah, yeah, it's like and basically it's uncharted. And, yeah, but, uh, yeah right. and you've got to go and turn keys at the same time yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. not terrible. I mean, it's terrible, but is it? Yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. But is it? You know? Is it, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we're due. We're way overdue, actually, for a really good Star Trek game. Yeah. Because when I was a kid in the, you know, early early thousands and mm. 90s, there were some great Star Trek I, games. Same with Star Wars. There was just, because there was so much, you, there'd be at least yeah. one good one a year. And there was that good Star, uh, the Klingon game, first person shooter one as well, mm. that had the same actor that plays Worf's brother oh, in Wolf's it brother. occasionally. But I guess um, now the the the, the tie in the movie TV tie in game has kind of died because of spoilers. So they've also they've been awful certainly, yeah, but it's also consistently case, bad. They've been yeah. consistently bad, but also I guess it's a case of like we can't do a, a Avengers game. Well, they can do a terrible Avengers game. Oh, they certainly they do. They certainly yeah. can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> can, I think you'll find. Yeah, that's I think worst. you'll find they can do possibly one of the worst games ever I, released I, in about I, like I, 10 years. I think years. the worst possible example, guys. <laughs> Uh, but like they couldn't do a the Batman game because they'd have to give the the, the so, yes they've done a Batman game they've oh. done a lot of Batman games haven't oh. they Ben yeah yeah I should get on to that I should <laughs> yeah. go I get a lot of but catching up to I that. like the idea because of... the script because they'd have to give them the, the script Com- and yeah. then that would get know. leaked and then I think you know, this is falling apart this yeah. whole but you can I think... <laughs> I'm just I'm drowning I'm but drowning like they, 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 they did but they can't do an interceptor game yes. Starring but, Chris Hemsworth's because wife. Because people want to know how it ends. That's right. But it's, Do but they I, intercept? You could, you they, could yeah, use the cast intercept. or an era, though, and tell a separate story, I feel. Yeah, like, and just release true. it at the same time. Like they did with that Star Trek one that I mentioned, the newer one, the mm. yeah. Drake one. That Guardians of the Galaxy game yeah. is, uh, has, surpri- has no right to be good. I agree. I'm mad about it, too. I'm pissed off that it's really good. <laughs> what, uh, what, um. <laughs> what, what format could a, a modern-day Star Trek game, could it be in a Guardians of the Star Galaxy style? you got the VR t- mm. Star Trek oh, bridge yeah, Oh, yeah. And that's not bad if you play with friends. I don't, honestly, I'm not sure. 
people will be like, what about Star Trek Online? And I'm like, what about actually playing a game that is good or shutting up and fucking off? Yeah, that's yeah. the idea, man. Suck, it, suck off. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> aggressive. Um, Star that's, Trek not, Online, that's their fault. That's not your fault. Star, yeah, Star Trek Online is like a, a Old Republic or a Star yeah. Wars Repub- Old Republic game slash World of Warcraft style okay. one. It's Real janky. Mm. You know, I use that word, word a lot, but it's, I don't know, it's not for me. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, anyway, so I actually didn't mind Discovery to start with, honestly. I thought, and it, what a, like, a beautiful looking mm. show as well. And I think it has a lot of, I think it genuinely has some good episodes in it. There's a Harry Mudd episode mm-hmm. with uh, Dwight from The Office, yes. which I think is really fun. I think there's some good stuff in there, but I, they started time traveling in an angel suit and they're like, what's the mystery? And I'm oh, like, that, I yeah, don't care season about one, this. see, I would agree. I think season one is part, is fine. Okay. Season two is there's so many like just oh this thing that we just made up to get us out of this problem mm. uh, and it the, starts to fall and the worm that travels through space of the power yeah. ship or whatever they do this all the time Spore with drive. new trek is that they just go this and then this and then this and then this they don't linger but they they do linger on like really just like fake emotional mm. stuff like they just have these like I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I'm so emotional. <laughs> it's very emotional. And because yeah. they're like trying to say, hey, you need to care about this, the yeah. viewer. But there's nothing to care about mm. because there's no stories. Yeah. They're, they're, in season two, I remember be, there being like three good episodes. Mm. And the rest was so bad that I was like, I'm angry. <laughs> because it was such lazy sort of uh, You've become one of those internet people who are angry. Yeah, but I don't – what you do is you don't go on the internet Interesting. and okay. be angry on you it. You shut That's, up about it unless, yeah. you're, yeah, unless you're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> unless somebody uh, asks you to And then up. Picard comes out and you're like, yeah, okay, Picard, I love that character. Yeah. Cool. And then they just do the same thing. They kind of throw everything at it. Mm. And Do you like the stuff where it's like, what if Picard's mother – and depression oh, no, or whatever. I hate, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. There's so much either. there's so much there and Picard isn't really Picard and Seven of Nine's there, but she's not really Seven of no, Nine. None of them are really They're boom. not yeah, it's yeah. just it's just kinda like a it's like a hey, remember these mm. this one, the person that you love? Well, that this is the actor that played them. <laughs> <laughs> don't um, you think? Don't you yeah, yeah, don't you reckon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just very unfulfilling yeah. to watch and and, I, I and nearly, ultimately incredibly boring. I think I nearly stopped a few times, but I'm just yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's on. But I'm not, because I wasn't such a, such, a, such a huge fan. I'm like, I don't care about this. Mm. Like, I don't care if it's bad. I don't care if this is anything. And I actually just nearly, I don't think I, did I watch the last episode? I don't know if I, I no, <laughs> oh, I think I did. The last episode of the newest Discover, oh, no, the, Lewis, the last episode of Picard mm. is the craziest Oh, so you didn't like, give up on this? You, you no, kept, I've, I've. And isn't I've, everybody coming back for the new season? They're yeah, I can't crew. wait to see how awful it is. <laughs> um, I just watch That's it. the tagline for the new season. <laughs> you I can't can. wait to see how <laughs> you awful this is. They come back, so they do all this. So in the end of Picard season two, they go through all this. Crew people die. Th- heaps of people die. Yeah. It? Everyday people. Yep. Uh, they all do it because Q is dying and wants Picard to value himself. Yes. So I'm like, mm. wait, you just fucking murdered so many people in this. Yeah. And then they come back in time to realize that the Borg Queen is good now and she's come back to stop a laser beam destroying <laughs> the universe. And yes. you're just like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Just it- do, pick one thing, do it well, yep. explore it, mm. make it serviceable, right? The dialogue that I makes would love, sense. I would love a la- just a, just a season devoted to a laser beam destroying the universe. And have to <laughs> but, follow the laser beam to its source. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's coming out of this uh, this big laser. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I like but I like the idea of the Borg Queen aligning with you know with the mm. Federation, and I like the mm. idea of a dying Q. Uh, like just being vengeful and just yeah. lashing out at his last moments to they, do, you know. It but, was just so many elements. It was just so confusing. You had evil Noonien Sung Data guy, that, but not Data. I wasn't human him. Data. So why did he look like Data? Nobody knows. Because uh, did they base Data <clears throat> off this guy? In the Star Trek universe, people's genetic uh, pool is very shallow. So if okay. you're someone's Great, 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 great grandfather. You look exactly like that person. Even if they're a robot. Even if they're a robot. And then, and 
Sounds like you don't understand he's, Star Trek. Jones. It does sound like he's that. He's trying to save his cloned daughter for some reason, but then he turns real bad and tries to stop Picard. Oh yeah, and she looks like the the, the clone from yes. the, the modern. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that. Too. And she's yeah. and he tries to stop Picard's ancestor who's going to outer space. She's doing a first contact style mission. Yes, but it's not first contact. No, it's not. Just to clarify. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot all of this. I have seen it. And then, but. They go back into a future where he succeeded, and it's like the mirror universe, but it's not the mirror universe. No. It's just, it's just what? What if Trump in future? Yeah. What and, if things didn't? Yeah. Be good. And <laughs> Biff. <laughs> Biff. Yeah, so, right. It is. It's the Biff future, right? Yeah. It's the Biff future. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then there's also. Yeah. And that's the second season. You're not even talking about the first I'm season. I'm not even talking about the first season. <laughs> Which is unrelated. The first season is like androids go crazy. So but why? Federation says no. Yeah. And then. Then uh, everybody shows up at the end. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's <laughs> and, what I like. And Jonathan Frakes is cooking pizza. He's yeah. He's got his little pizza oven. Yeah. Yeah. I love it when. So you think all weird. Hope, uh, you, you, I love it when you think all hope is lost and then. Other famous people show up. Yeah, or characters that I recognize. I want that in my up. real life. There's yeah. such. It's just. It's um. Daryl Summers. What are you doing here? <laughs> As someone that likes to, I mean, I've, I'm not. I'm by no means am I an experienced like writer or whatever. But mm. I have, I have dabbled and I have worked yeah. on shows and things like that. And and you said, even me in my novice, maybe we could make that guy oily. stupid way. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why are you doing so? M- mm. The choices that they make are so I, nonsensical. I think it's. I think it's like a number of people involved. You know, I don't think it's like one person Mm-mm, necessarily making all not. the. I think it's too many yeah. ideas, like you said. And there's no. It feels rudderless. It feels completely yeah. rudderless and leaderless. It's so bizarre. Is it because they and think we might not get another season of this, so let's just put out the idea? Are they only doing one more? They're doing one more, yeah. Yeah, yeah I right. think they're done. Okay, Unless yeah. it does really well, Ooh. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But Patrick Stewart is a million now, but, you know. He's so old. He's very old. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lower Decks is good. I like it. Yeah. I, I think haven't it's really messed with it a lot, but yeah. I, I do enjoy it. Yeah. Watching it. And yeah. Uh, it's just, it's fun. And uh, again, like you said about the idea of, you know, just the everyday crew members. Mm. And I think it's because nobody's got a, got a good look at it. You know, none of the higher ups at Paramount, they can yeah. just, they're free to kind of just do weird and funny and yeah. also some heartfelt stuff in there as well every now and then. Yeah. I think with Discovery, they kind of, uh, I like the fact that they had to go into the future in season three. And that that kind of was like, oh, this could be fun. That's when I stopped. Kind of, it ended yeah. up kind kind of unraveling again for similar problems too much. Yeah, and so much emotion, and it turns kind of YA and mm. let's discuss feelings and let's tell the viewer what this is actually about. It, it, it suffers <laughs> from the that kind of MCU guys. They where they look at the camera, and go, racism is bad. Yeah, you know, it's like, and they're right. Uh, excuse they me, they are right. <laughs> but the MCU like, would not. The MCU would not dare su- make such a bold statement as racism. Oh is yeah, bad. they they'd could like, really. They might. They'd say some people think racism is bad, but yeah. some people Th- that Captain America. Yeah, because they could. They series, could limit yeah. them in the Chinese yeah, yeah. market. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> because remember the Captain America series? Anthony Mackie's like, you guys need to do something. You and need they're to like, do it. Talk and they're to like, each it's other. hard because of politics. And he's like, I don't give a shit. You gotta get it together. And <laughs> I don't like, give an ass. And I'm actually. like, what specifically? What are we? What are we talking about? <laughs> it's very vague. Anyways, and uh, Strange New Worlds is pretty good so far. <laughs> I have been. I mean, I I loved when they were sort of in Discovery. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I really liked Anson Mount in Discovery. I love that he knows he's going to have a horrible experience. Yeah. That, though I think he'll get a crystal and get I out of it. I reckon he'll get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Actually. They'll rewrite it. Yeah, or they'll, he'll split into two or something. Yeah, something I don't know. Yeah. He's a robot. But I know. have been really enjoying it. It's, yeah. it's, it's exactly what I wanted. And I know that we can't cater to – I know that they tried something different with Discovery with the serialized stuff. Yeah. And they tried something – well, Picard felt – just kind of feels like a bit of a cash in, like yeah. a, a remember this nostalgia trip. Mm. I do but remember it. Yeah, I definitely. Star- remember. Strange New Worlds is exactly what I want. It's episodic. It's systematic. I, uh, yeah. It's high. <laughs> it's got that good color. It's got a nice color palette. It does. Mm. I love yeah. Instead yeah. of the forms and the cold discovery. Mm. Mm. I like that. Even when they go to the past, they don't try and recreate things exactly. Mm. It's like this is like a reimagining of. I don't. Yeah. I like that. And I think that the ship designs mm. are are imaginative. And yeah, fun, mm. and not just like, liking the Gorn ships. Yeah, yeah, I love, loved that episode. I also, Going back to the, the it went kind of submarine. Yes, yeah, yeah, it yeah. does. Okay. 
I also like that, and Star Wars doesn't do this. They recast. They're just like, we're not going to recreate somebody. We're no. just going to recast. Yeah. yeah. You, we, Where I feel like Star Wars have been like, well, now you've got to use this Luke Skywalker monster, <laughs> which yeah. looks terrific. Don't get me wrong. It does. But we can, we can, can deal with it. Yeah. We can deal with a recast. Yeah. Mm. I'm okay with a recast. But now they've set that kind of. I would rather a recast mm. than an Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley. <laughs> I'd, I'd hate an Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Uncanny Valley. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I've been loving. I love the the Goofy episode, the Spock Amok, mm. uh, Amok Spock, <laughs> and uh, I liked the last episode uh, with the sexy pirate lady who was like, "I'm." I was like, "She's definitely bad," and then she was like, <laughs> "I'm bad," and I'm like. Yeah, knew it. Yeah, why? The vibe. How could the vibe. this happen? A lady that was had piercings and a face tattoo, and we were wore black cat suit was bad. How do we get here? I caramba. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like we've kept you for way too long, Ben Russell. Oh, but I enjoy it. I enjoy talking shit about I hope Star so, Trek. Yeah. So I, do I, 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 I do like some it. Stuff. I think it's. I think it's. I like the. I think the Strange New World is for me. Yeah. If, if if Paramount are making. Different Star Treks for different people. Yes. Then Strange New World is for, for my people, which are just like people that want just good old Star Trek. Good again. old fashioned. So I, I recommend it and I, I'm fanging for the next step every week, you know. Oh, that's always good. That's, yeah. That's a great feeling. It's but a great feeling. <laughs> I'm fanging for that. Yeah, yeah. I love fanging for an app. It's been a while. I used to just be like, oh, Discovery's out. I'm going to have to hate watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. There are some good elements about Discovery. I feel like I'm being very cruel to it. But it's just such, especially this last season, was just so random. Yeah. Uh, rudderless again. Rudderless. Yeah. Kevin Rudderless. Kevin Rudderless. Uh, anyway. Kevin 07. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, uh, to, to swing back to your show, which is, which is right now on the app, and the app is called? 10 Play. That's right, and I always knew that. Uh, I always knew that forever. That's right. It's, yeah. called, uh, it's called Time to Die. Please check it out because this show being picked up is obviously contingent, I'd imagine, on how many, yes, how so many, even how many you, looks people are doing it. Even if you don't want to watch it, just uh, pop mm. it in a window. <laughs> yep. Uh, mute that browser. Yep. Mute that site. Go right-click on the tab and go mute site mm-hmm. and just play play the show. Yep. Yeah, yeah, And, and then tweet at 10, I'd imagine. And be yeah, like, tweet at 10 says, I like this. Yeah. Mm. That's all you have to say. And then if you're international, get that VPN and you can do the same thing. Just do it over and over again. <laughs> that's right. Because <laughs> put it on the list. You know, I think that it I genuinely think that it's a it, it is a original. A it's original. It absolutely is original. On television. Can you even fathom something I don't, like that? It happen? scares me, but I yeah. like it. Mm. Yeah. It's an original concept. It showcases Australian comedy. Are you sure Australian you haven't bought it from the UK? Are you sure you haven't bought the I'm from the I'm positive this isn't a U. This hasn't been. This isn't a panel show from the UK. <laughs> Interesting. It's an original Australian IP that showcases Australian comedy. It's in not a the twisted, s- messed up way. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the same faces you see in Australian comedy no. often as well, which is terrific. Yeah, so we're yeah. getting all levels of comedy comedians yeah. in here. Yeah, and you'll see different comedy venues, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I, it's a long shot. Yeah. But I think uh, I think it, it definitely deserves it. I think the concept deserves to be seen at least at a bare minimum three or four more times. And ideally picked up by an American network and then you get a bunch of money, presumably, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Or a UK, uh, I mean, it, or, or New Zealand. Yeah, Ooh. yes, yep, yep. All right. They could all do it. <laughs> they could all do it, yeah. Yep. Terrific. You can also tweet at Channel 10 as in 10AU and just be like, oi. Oi. Yeah. Guess. Guess, guess another. <laughs> guess another. Your dogs. That's it. Oh, guess more dogs, eh? <laughs> guess a. Anyway, um, I'm just saying things in the microphone. That's now. fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, thank you so much for coming on. Really thank you for having it. me. It's a, oh, it was pleasure. a pleasure. Yeah. Long time listener, first time caller. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Really God appreciate it. All. We'd love to have you back as well if you would be so inclined. Oh, I would uh, be absolutely wrapped any time. I know. I, I, uh, I. I enjoy movies and television. All right. And computer Great. games, as a matter of fact. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So, this guy's uh, just like us. I know. I'm just like you guys, you know? <laughs> In that I've He's got... good at impressions too. And, is I, he? and I've also got a voice of an angel. That, that is also true. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much again, No worries. Really can, I, can I just quickly say if you want to oh, come? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just socials. Yeah, definitely. Ben Russell's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also uh, I do a Twitch. Oh, yes. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got all sorts of stuff going on. You've got a twitch.television. I've got a twitch.tv slash Bon member. B-O-N-M-E-M-B-E-R. Do you also Come run? in, say hello, say 
hey, I listened to you on this podcast and you said some things I don't agree with. I don't. How dare you? I'm unaware. Subscribe. This counts as engagement. Yeah. Subscribe. This is engagement. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, do you also run an a in- improv night? I do do an improv is night. Called, is it called Teaching Your Dog to Read? It's called Teaching Your Dog to Read. It's on once a month at Comedy Republic. Our next show is on the 27th of June. <laughs> All right. Which this probably won't come out before then. Who but knows? Every Who month knows? after that. It'll Every month on yeah. that. Follow me on the socials and I'll let you know. Oh, nice. Also, Replay Festival, Comedy Republic, 13th and 14th of July, I think. <laughs> Replay Festival. I'm doing a show. It's called Ultimate Hollywood Tours. Go to their website for more details. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I saw uh, that. Thanks. Really you. good. It's really good. You. Uh, are they doing it in the venue, or are they doing it? We're doing it. We're meeting at the venue, and then we're going down. So it's going to have some, nice. It's going to have some D- DVD extras in there. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah hell we're yeah. going to get some DVD extras. In there. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, Mason. What's the next segment of the show? I don't know. I don't, I don't it's, know. It's what I don't we know, read. I don't know when we put. It's this what in. we read. In. Oh, it's what we read. And what we're going to read. That's right. He's okay, right, great. everybody. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> now, Mason, you might have noticed I missed something. There. Bye, Ben. <laughs> Bye. See you later, Ben. Mason. Yes. You didn't notice that I didn't do a thing. What it didn't? You? I oh, did you didn't not say. say... The, you didn't say Westworld. No, because of course I was saying Westworld for wow. maybe three years. Yeah. Because I was waiting for the new season of Westworld to drop. No, you were originally doing it because you were waiting for the new season to West, of Westworld to drop, but then people were like, he should stop saying that thing. <laughs> and then out of spite, you kept doing it for several years longer than was absolutely necessary. So have you watched, you watched the first episode? I watched of- the first episode of Westworld. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's kind of reset the universe and all uh-huh, of those uh-huh. things. Okay. A few years have passed. Yeah. You know, some of your favourites are back. Mm. Sometimes you see someone and you're like, what the friggin' heck is this person doing we get a, here? We get a, do we get a... That's Edward Harris. Oh, do we get a, uh, a Jimmy Simpson uh, appearance? Who's Jimmy Simpson? He's the, he's the guy from Always Sunny who's in a lot of things. Oh. He's, the, he's Ed Harris's... He's Ed Harris back in time. Yeah, no. Okay, well, I that's... thought we were going to. I'm not going to okay. spoil it, but there are a few surprises. Uh, he's in The Man Who Fell to Earth. I was... Oh, yeah, I should watch The Man. That's the show that you talked about last week. So it's good to have a Westworld back. What an expensive show that they're probably going to cancel. Well, I'm definitely going to get to that. But I I had a big week because I – not a big week. I had a big yesterday because I watched every episode of uh, Stranger Things. Oh, my God. We've got – as mentioned, yeah, we've got a video coming up on this. Took an entire day. Yeah. But it was worth it. Yeah. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Other things that I watched because I've had a little time off. Yeah, I bet you have. (laughs) <laughs> We've got time off in August, Mason. I know, right? But I decided to get a little bonus time off. <laughs> well, when we have the month off, I'll still be working my regular job. Oh, great. So I just, this is this is a it, – it's not important. Yeah. Anyway, I watched a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, Only Murders in the Building is back. There was There's two episodes I of that. got to finish the first season. Yeah, yeah. Because so Claire, we were watching it together and then she got ahead and I went, ah, fuck it, I don't care. All right. So Martin Short, Steve Martin, Selena yep. Gomez. Love all that. Uh, in, the, in, the pre- in the previous season – they were solving a murder in the building while also making a podcast about that murder. Yes. And at the end of the last season, uh, spoilers, not really spoilers, mm. but um, the uh, bunny who's the, the like the woman who runs the, the mm. apartment board and like controls who, who lives there and who gets evicted or what have you, she was really out to get those three for causing a ruckus and she turned up uh. and they're like, it's probably you guys. So now they've got a... They've got to solve this murder, but also everybody thinks they've done the murder oh, okay. and, uh, and they've still got to do their podcast because you have to do your podcast you at all it. times. But it's funny. It's good. It's good. Intriguing. I love it. Love those three. I just realized also I had my um, Twitter. There was a Twitter video playing in the background and it says it was on mute and I'm hoping that all of we all the talking we did oh, yes. wasn't just a video playing over the top of Terrific. that. Terrific. We'll find out in the edit. I guess we will, sure. <laughs> Do you don't want to find out now? Nah, it's fine. Okay, cool. We'll, we also have this version. So. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, Collings will he'll fix it. He'll fix it with his he'll magic. He'll somehow remove that yeah, audio. Yeah, that's right. Let's see what else. What else? I watched uh, the movie Spiderhead, which is the joke. Oh, yeah, what would you think of that? The, I thought it was all right. Yeah, I've heard that. It's, so it's Joe Kaczynski who also directed. Joker? No. Joe Kaczynski. Yes, Who he directed what? Top Gun Maverick. Did he? And yes. he did Spiderhead as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's busy. He is busy. But because, but, I mean, it's a, but because it's a Netflix movie, it's not great. Is that right? It's all right. I think mm. it, the, the what you have to get over, I think, is firstly, it's it's mostly filmed on. It's it's very much it's filmed in a box. It's pretty much filmed in a box because it's Miles Teller and Journey Smollett yes. plays these two uh, sort of former prison inmates, and they've been. They've been uh, moved to this medical facility where various chemicals are being tested on people 
by Dr. Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Handsome Dr. Chris Hemsworth. 41% rotten tomato. Wellness expert Dr. Chris Hemsworth. Do you think he could be a doctor in real life? Or yes. Or do you reckon he's too dumb? <laughs> You said he's too dumb. I to didn't me. say that. You said he's I didn't too even say, I didn't even do a look that said he's probably too dumb. Yeah, you were. You did that smart. kind of face. You were like, mm. I think if he applied himself. Yeah? Yeah. He'd beat you up, I reckon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but what's. what? Uh, anyway, and so what is interesting is it, it's. It, again, it's very small scale as opposed to a Top Gun Maverick. It's very. It feels a lot like a play. I think it was based. It's based on a short story. Yeah. I don't say I think it's based on. I know it is because I read the short story. Oh, really? Afterwards. But. Was the short story better? No. No. But what's interesting, what they both share is mm. the, the various drugs that are being tested on and, and you know, what are, what are the, what, what's, what's real and what's just a drug, you, a drug that's being tested on you or whatever. One of the drugs that is sort of central to the plot is called Darken Phlox. Okay. And so there's a lot of scenes where people are like, you've got to give him the Darken Phlox. Or like, <laughs> I won't take the Darken Phlox. <laughs> Settle down. Give it a different name. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Just uh, call it... Like B42. Fart and Flocks, that's right. <laughs> Fart and Flocks, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I've got a couple of things that I haven't read yet. Ooh. Uh, but uh, there's a comic by Charles Soule called Eight Billion Genies. Which is apparently very okay. good where like everybody on earth gets like a wish. Okay. And there's another one. Chip Zdarsky's got a new comic called Public Domain. Oh, I like that Chip Zdarsky. Uh, and it's about comic book rights or something. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read it yet, but yeah. I purchased it and I'm waiting for it to um, – no, I'm not waiting for it. I have it. I'm nice. waiting to uh, to read Internet it. Internet speeds in Australia are not that bad. You've exactly. purchased it and you have it. I had to you... watch 14 hours of Stranger Things also. That's true. So there we go. Uh, here's a couple more things. Great. Uh, I've been listening. I'll talk about those next week. I okay. Yeah. Friend of the show, Josh Earl, has a new podcast. It's called 100% Hits Volume Pod. Wow. I've been listening to this one. It's very good. It's um he and a guest. He'll beat you up. Yeah, he probably could. Okay, he does, does CrossFit, I think. Does he really? I think so. Some sort of maybe F45. I think he does, he does that. one of those, does he? He does one of those, yeah. And after my own, I'll beat him up. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, every week he and a guest uh, go through one side of uh, uh, the 100% Hits compilation, which is a Sick. compilation of, uh, of of hot musical hits uh, from the 90s and up. So they're yeah. going through various uh, and it's, uh, it's a fun ride. Great. I'm like, oh, my God, I recognize that. So they play song. a bit of the song. Yeah, they're, they're, he's, a, he's got a he's got a license for it. That's great. Maybe I'll try and get on that show. <laughs> <laughs> now that you know it's good, no, you, no, you it's want good. to you want get, get on that? Okay, you'd have to know anything about music, though. I know that era. I don't think you would kidding have, me? You know, you probably wouldn't have to because you just have to, you know, hundred percent hits, yeah. mate. That trust yeah. me. If it was like one hundred percent James, if they were like, "What's a song from last year?" I'd be like, "I don't fucking know." But if <laughs> you're like, "What's a song from nineteen ninety two?" I'd be like, I swear by All for One, whatever it was called. <laughs> okay. Maybe that was from later than that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also because um, Ben Russell earlier mentioned yeah. uh, he has an improv show called Teaching Your Doctor Reed, I went and I checked it out. And? Very funny. Excellent. So it's um it's a, it's a live show, as you might imagine. Yeah. It's, it's one Monday a month, I think, in mm. Melbourne if you if you go to the Comedy Republic website. I should website. get on this show. You should def- <laughs> we should both definitely go because that's where we shine, <laughs> live improv on a stage with an audience. With other people who are excellent at improv. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's um, sort of a mix of like professional improvisers and stand-up comedians doing ah. improv for like maybe the first time. Oh, well. Maybe they've secretly got an improv background, but they don't tell anybody about it. Yeah, uh, but it was, but if we did it, we don't. So yeah, that would we'd really be like we'd really sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this week it was Ben Russell, uh, Lena Moon, who you might know from Gaming Game, Lena Game Moon. Yeah, uh, yeah. and 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 Twitch is very funny. Yep. And then Aaron Chen, you might oh, know, also very funny, very funny. Tim Hewitt, who who's like a I think a hidden gem of Melbourne comedy. Tim Hewitt is very funny, very yeah. funny guy. Um, and there's some improvisers whose names I cannot recall. Oh, that's not my problem. Yeah, but it was a very funny show. So if you're in Melbourne, go to Comedy Republic and uh, see, see. They got they run shows. Maybe first every of, night every, of the week? First of the month, do they do? No, I think it's the last of... Monday of the month. Wow. Is that even true? I don't know. Just look at the website. Is that even true, man? I don't know, James. I just, I just don't know, but that's all I've been doing. What a is... long show. Should we should we keep doing the show, though? I mean, I guess we could, yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah, do, do, do people want that, though? I don't know. Well, let's just see how we go. They okay, can always let's, turn, do let's just do it, and yeah. if, if you want to leave, you can. You, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We. You can't leave, though, Mason. You no, have to I can't the, at all. No. to do the show. All right, here we go. Letters. Yeah. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. Another here right now, we're going to do like Big this. letters. Westworld. <laughs> That's our new thing we're going to do. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I like big letters. That was fun. <laughs> 
Are you ready to commit to another bit for years, Mason? Yes! <laughs> Especially, ab- we don't even know if it's going to, people are going to hate it. <laughs> That's uh, what I like about it. Mason, you've got a big letter this week. I've got so many big letters. And if people do want to send us a big letter, you can actually send our, our Gmail to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com or simply hashtag us on Twitter, hashtag weeklyplanetpod. Yeah. This is from uh, Adam Smith, yes. presumably not the economist. Right. Um, a request for existential birthday films. Hi, dudes. <laughs> okay. My name is Adam, long-time listener, first-time writer, etc. Love the pod and the caravan of garbage and everything else. The day after the next episode of the pod comes out for me will be my 18th birthday. Oh, my goodness. It's a terrifying concept being an adult, and I plan on celebrating by turning off my brain and watching coming-of-age movies until my heart melts. Unfortunately, I only know two good ones, Stand By Me and Billy Elliot, and am in desperate need of suggestions. Mm. Do either of you have some solid feel-good, feel-sad films I can use to make my jump to paying taxes a little less jarring? Interesting. Uh, Also, don't worry about it. Like, being 18... None of that adult shit really kicks in yet. Like it slowly piles upon you over the yeah, next until decade. you're crushed underneath. Yeah, you got yeah, a bit yeah, of time, yeah. so mm. don't 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 even trip, dog. Yeah. Um, well, I've just googled this. Uh, Book smart. <laughs> that's a great one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the perks of being a wallflower it does have one Ezra Miller in it, but oh. it, it's a it's a terrific movie. Oh. I've heard the Jonah Hill movie mid nineties is very good. Juno's great. Juno is great. Uh, Edge of Seventeen, that's good. That's got um, Haley Steinfeld? Steinfeld. That's a very good one. Even Bumblebee, that's like a coming of age movie. How about movie. this one? Do you think this movie is aged? As a, I was just thinking about this one earlier. As a yes. coming of age movie, super bad. Is it still a good I, I movie? I mean, yeah, it's in like, there's like, it's it's gross and, and rude and whatever. It's gross But I think super bad is still very funny um, mm. as a movie. The yeah. movie Eighth Grade by Bo Burnham. Yeah, yeah. People like the movie Lady Bird. I haven't seen it. Mm. You got another one from the 80s, The Outsiders. I guess Breakfast Club as well. People like that, Mason. What do you think about as a as a as a coming of age movie? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I don't like Ferris Bueller. That's interesting. I wish he was killed in that parade. Oh no! Yeah, he's what about the TV series. The Ferris Bueller TV series. <laughs> Who's in it from the original? I don't know. Probably no, no one. one. Imagine it. I no imagine. One. Yeah. What about the the Adventures of Beans Baxter? Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Oh, here's one that's um, it's got Steve Carell uh, and other people in it. The Way Way Back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Apparently, Moonlight is coming of age, but I have not seen it. Oh, what's another good coming of age? Well, no, I'd, I've never been a huge Ferris Ferris Bueller fan because I think he sucks. And everyone's like, Ferris is great, and I'm like, this guy's a fucking lunatic. He's a sociopath. Ah, <laughs> uh, the movie is it, his, is it his leopard print cardigan? Yes, yeah, all of it. It's yeah. His old vibe. Ah, uh, the movie Boy by Taika Waititi yeah, is right. a really good coming of age story. You know what's also a good one? Yeah. In its Empire Records. Oh, I was going to say Submarine, which is the Richard Ayoade movie. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I that should watch that. One, yeah. What about this one? It's 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 more younger, but what about The Sandlot? It's coming of age, but it's like younger. It's not like oh, yeah. 18. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. kids who are like 12. Yeah. Easy A, that's a good one. I was just going to say Stone. Easy A with Emmy, St- Emmy Stone. Yeah. And um, what's the guy? The other guy. The b- b- handsome man, bold man. Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Yeah. That's a great one. And, to, and that one's great because it's got it's got a teen. She's going through some dramas, but she does have supportive parents who understand. Yes. Because they seem like real people who exist in the world yeah. and not just caricatures who are like, you kids, you know, you're doing mm. your kids stuff and we don't get it because we were never kids. Exactly. Uh, Ten Things I Hate About You. Yeah. Uh, Rushmore. That's a good one. Rushmore's a good one. Napoleon Dynamite. What about that one? That's good. It's a good one. It's coming of age. Love, Simon. I haven't seen it. Apparently that's very good. What else, Mason? Mean Girls? That's coming of age. Yeah. Dead Poet Society. Uh, pretty grim, but yeah, mm. it's good. Uh, Breaking Away is a good movie from the 70s. Breaking got... Dawn, The Twilight. No, 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 no. Which no. one's Breaking Away? It's got um, Jackie Earl Haley in it. Okay, mm. cool. Fast, t- Fast Times Ridgemont High. What about that one? Is Brick a coming of age movie? The movie with... Uh, uh, yeah. It's the got, Ryan Johnson movie. It's got teens in it. It does have teens in it. Well, I like that movie because it is like the the you know, it is a it's a murder mystery, but it's also about how when you're a teenager, everything seems like the most important dramatic thing in the yeah, world. Yeah. But from the outside, it's just mm. kids in basements. Yeah, <laughs> sure, like, yeah. Slap fighting each other or whatever yeah. it is, you know? Uh Bennett like Beckham. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that is a good one. Clueless is a good movie, probably. I haven't seen it in Two decades. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Oh, yeah. And that sequel, Sisterhood of Two Pairs of Pants. Oh, they just got an extra pair of pants. Two pants, anybody? And by the time time they've gotten to the third sequel, Four Pairs of Pants, 
all the drama's gone, you know? Oh my God. Because everybody's got, got their pair own pair of pants, of pants yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, almost famous, I guess that would be That's one. That's a good one. Yes, yeah. absolutely. What about Garden State? That's more if you're in your late 20s. <laughs> That's true. You can hang on and also, one. are we allowed to recommend Garden State anymore? Because it's lame? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's amazing. Maybe, Maybe people have come. It's Ghost World's apparently good. I haven't seen Ghost World. Yeah, I like World. Ghost World a lot, yeah. Uh, what about, oh, here's a good one. Sing Street is amazing. You've mentioned Sing Street before. Um, you? What's that one set in the forest and the, the boy that has got the kid from Jurassic World, the first one? What's his name? His name's Nick something. Set in a forest. Yeah, they go and live in a forest. Oh. It's got Nick Robinson in it and it's called... God damn. The Kings of Summer from oh. 2013. That's a really good movie as well. And that right. one, uh, the director of that is uh, Jordan Vo- Vogt Roberts, who did the one of the King Kong movies. He did one of the King Kong movies. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, I like him. Did I you like ever see movies. Licorice Pizza? No, I haven't. That's good. I also haven't. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't see it. Great. But it's one of the, yeah, it's uh, a lot of people like, this is amazing. And then other people like, everyone who says it's amazing is just pretending they, oh. that it's amazing or like they've deluded themselves into thinking it's amazing and it's actually garbage. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Should I track it down? I guess I could. And by track it down, I mean find it on streaming because it's probably on streaming. People say there's a lot of like American Beauty, but you don't need to watch American Beauty. No, that's, I mean, you can watch American Beauty. That's not Beauty. heartwarming. No. Yeah. About a boy, I guess that's kind of coming of age. Reality Bites, if you're like people in their 20s being like, I don't want to pay rent. Here's the thing. I, I, see, I wonder if some of these, I wonder, do they hold up because the idea of – has the idea of being a teen changed – so significantly yeah. over the last few decades that like some of these are just you'd look at it and go what a weird historical document look at these aliens yeah <laughs> yeah and i think also because some of these older movies it is men and women in their 20s absolutely playing teens yeah whereas nowadays if you get a book smart for example yeah i believe those teens are actually teens they're real teens yeah that's it anyway yeah so that's um Anyway, I think we named every movie. We then. named every movie that's ever existed, so I think yeah. we can't be blamed for um, anything. Yeah, so say anything. Good. There's yeah. one. Oh. I don't know if it's any good. Mm. Great. Uh, Boys in the Hood. i got to watch that, man. Why have I not watched that yet? <laughs> What's wrong with me? The Virgin Suicides. I haven't seen that. I probably shouldn't watch that, though. Uh, no, I don't think – no, I reckon maybe no, – no coming-of-age movies with the word suicide in the title. People love the movie – Except the Suicide Squad, the greatest coming-of-age of movie of all time. Uh, people love the movie Boyhood because it took 12 years to film or whatever. Oh, yeah. But I apparently – well, Claire watched Boyhood. I think I talked about it on this show. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what would you think? She was like, yeah, it was all right. And I'm like, do you know they filmed that over like 12 years? It was the same kid and they kept coming back and filming it. And Claire was like, oh, my God, that's incredible. But she was like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, like, right, right. Movie. right. Right. Like as a concept, that's incredible because like you see Ethan Hawke in like the early 2000s and then in like yeah, right. the mid-2010s. And at the end, he's in the last couple of scenes, he's filming Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, later, I'm yeah. busy. But that's all the time they had, so they had to film it. That's funny because you also see the moment in that where he's like, i got to put this frozen air in my shoes, a.k.a. glass. Not and the director night. had to be like, Ethan, for the last time. Glass is not frozen air. Yeah, everybody It's a knows common that. misconception. It's not, though. I don't think anybody thinks that. <laughs> i got another tweet here, Mason. Go on. It's from Mr. Frodo who says, they shouldn't have given away the twist that Tony Stark – oh, by the way, I put out that tweet about uh, Clash of the Titans, so I got – at the top of that I said, what's your what's your um, unpopular movie opinion or <laughs> okay, something? Okay, right. Which wasn't a, so you have some wasn't unpopular... a real question. So do you have some I got un- some, though. <laughs> you have some unpopular movie opinions. Okay. Uh, anyways, check out my Clash of the Titans tweet if you're interested. <laughs> uh, they should – some people uh, just didn't see that at all, didn't, <laughs> didn't read the rest of it, but they shouldn't have given away the twist that Tony Stark is Iron Man at the end of the first movie. I was having so much fun guessing Iron Man's identity and they ruined the mystery that the sequels could have explored. Now, I know that's a joke, mm-hmm, go but on. what if they didn't reveal that? What do you think that movie would have – what do you think the sequels could have looked like? Oh, that's – Would they have done like it's his bodyguard and – Well, they would have had to – I mean, some of the action sequences would have – because obviously there's the scene in Iron Man 2, which is maybe the best scene where he's on the racetrack yeah. and, and, and Whiplash – Cuts his car in half and he, he does gets, a big whiplash. He does a big him. whiplash and he gets thrown the the Iron Man portable suit. How's that work? He does he does he, does he run off he run off track and then put the suit on and be like I'm here to, I'm his bodyguard. I'm here out. Or has he got like a hologram version of himself as well? You know, oh. where he's like, "There's a hologram. I can't be Iron Man. I'm a hologram. I'm not a hologram. I'm a real physical man." Or they could get don't even, hand me anything. Or he but could I'm get here. Happy Hogan to put the beard on and yeah. be like, "I'm uh, how can an Iron Man be Tony Stark? I'm Tony Stark. I'm right here." Exactly. Could have been a fun comedy of errors, you know. I think it kind of set the precedent for also nobody's got an identity really. Yeah, that's oh, true. There are some exceptions. Well, yeah, it kind but, of it kind of changed the game as far yeah. as 
uh, movie superheroes, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they, they did it the way they did, but I just thought that was an interesting joke slash not a, not a terror, not, 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 not nothing, Mason. <laughs> an interesting joke slash not a joke. Yes, that's right. Wow, what else wow, have you wow, got? Wow, wow, wow. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, here we go. This is from Sarah. Mm-hmm. Hi, James and Mason. Uh, seeing, uh, seeing Sam Neill in Jurassic World Reunion or whatever makes me remember when my dad took my little sister and I to see Event Horizon not knowing anything about it <laughs> except that it had that guy we all liked from Jurassic Park. We were not old enough to handle Event Horizon. Uh, wow. Needless to say, halfway through the movie, my dad was simultaneously trying to cover our eyes and shuffle us out of the theatre as fast as possible. Uh, I was wondering if either of you has ever left the theatre for whatever reason or what it would take for you to do so. I've never left the theatre. I've also never left the theatre. I've been like... In a way, we were born in the theatre and we'll die in the theatre. God, I hope so. Mm. No, I hope I die at home. Um, Mason, um, I've been tempted... I also hope you die at home because otherwise those... Poor cinema employees. I They're know, gonna deal right? with that, you know. Nah, they get paid yeah. enough. They can deal with me. <laughs> they just tip you on one of those circular <laughs> bins. It's not quite, not quite big enough because the, the the top you got is the covered. Lip on it or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting, interesting theory, Mason, that you've got there. Mm. Um, no, no, I've never left. I've definitely been tempted. Some say he's never left. Yeah, I've definitely been. I've definitely been like got the end of the movie, and I know there's a post credits, and I'm just like no, and I leave. <laughs> right, sure. Uh, what about you? No, I've never left because I guess... You've left... Uh, I, I know you've left some movies early because you've had to go to work. Uh, there was something I remember we saw that you had to cut out. Yeah. Did you miss, like, Jumanji 2 you had to leave? I had to leave something? Jumanji 2 because yeah. I had to go to work. Yeah. Um, but I would. Ne- I, I will never leave voluntarily, I don't think, just because... You're I think- sitting down. I'm so, oh my god! And imagine standing up. I don't want to leave now. Yeah, I'll have to stand up. We should get standing desks for the podcast. Why? Because we can we can do a little walk. That'd be freaking sick, man. Yeah, it'd be freaking sick. But I guess I my my feeling is well, what if this has got a huge finale or just a really you know yeah I I am increasingly like my 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 brain increasingly thinks well maybe you know most movies are not a hundred percent great or a hundred percent bad. Disagree. Maybe there's a scene at the end and. It maybe it doesn't make everything worthwhile, but you go, oh, that's a fun, yeah. fun little gag or little joke or scene or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I can I can at least go away with that. You know, um, how often does that actually happen? Though? Never. You're not enjoying a thing, and then a thing happens. Never. Never end. gets any better. <laughs> but what if I leave and then I read a review and I go, I mean, this was this movie sucks, and I want to see what everybody else, I want everybody mm. else to talk about how it sucks, and then I go and and then the last all the reviews are like, okay, but. Don't leave because the, yeah. the last scene is good somehow. At the end, you know, Anthony Hopkins does a flip or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's not one of the movies where he's playing like an action mm. kind of role, like an Ogre. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a boring drama where he's yeah, a yeah. priest. Yeah. And at the end, he just does a big flip. Exactly. Mm. Bond finally stills his rotors enough <laughs> to get that drink, you know, and it's all worth it. It's so heartwarming. <laughs> I don't think I'd leave a movie where Bond was played by an attack helicopter. <laughs> I think I'd probably stick to it, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't leave. Yeah. Because I would. I uh-huh. absolutely would. But I also pick my movies right, pretty yeah. carefully. Mm. I'll, I'll turn something off, like at home, you know. Mm. I'll be like, nah, I'm not doing this. We haven't seen the movie Men yet, but we're going to see it. Yes. And um, appara- I've read a lot of discourse on the internet. I don't I don't know the answer to this, but apparently the last scene is quite disturbing. So oh, great. would you leave a movie because something's too disturbing? Or I, I can't say that I I wouldn't, but it's never happened to me. Yeah, right. I've always stuck with whatever the thing is. Mm. Yeah, like I, I think they, I, there's definitely a line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I've never. But, hit al- that. but also, I like like you said, I don't think there's a. I, I'm, I'm not going to go. I'm probably, I'm rarely interested in a movie where they're like this. What are you last- doing this show for? If you're rarely interested in a movie, shouldn't you be more compelled to my movies? Oh my god, I gotta go. <laughs> no, you're sitting. Remember. Oh. <laughs> you enjoy sitting so That's much. That's the duality of man, isn't it? I love sitting, but I don't want to be here because I'm not interested in subject matter. Sometimes I'll just say to people, I'll sit down, and I'm like, I fucking love sitting. Yeah. Like I'll say, I'll tell people nice. about it yeah. because I'm boring. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so Look at this chair I'm in. It's not even about the chair. It's just yeah. sitting. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I'm going to be um, sitting on the floor. Yeah, I'm not going to choose a movie that that is like, this movie is the most disturbing movie you'll ever see. You're going to yeah. be sick. Yeah. Um, and I'm there's not- certain kids' movies that I won't say. Right. Like my son has he's been talking about emojis and he's like, you know, there's an emoji movie and I'm like, I can't come with you on that one. Like I'm sorry. Right. I cannot right, right. see I, we did Space Jam too. Uh-huh. And I just don't think I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have the 
you don't have the history of emojis that I have, you'd say to him, you know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the rich history. You don't know about when the internet was like just all emojis, all emoji memes for like six months. I'm still using emojis, mate. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly different faces. Mm-hmm, sure. I often send them to colleagues who edits this. Yeah, yeah. Like here's an emoji and whatever. You'll often do the the crying, laughing, tilted head emoji. Yep, I'll the do gun that. Gun. <laughs> I do a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have fun, don't we? We do. Yeah. Anyways, great question and nothing. I guess I've seen people walk out. It's happened like a fair fair bit. Yeah, and I always, I'm always like, how did? Yeah, I, I guess that we're we're in that era of we've got all the information. Yeah, but there must be people who just go, oh, that sounds good. Mm. They go to the movie theater and they go, that sounds good. I'll get a ticket for that, and they go in and go, this isn't the movie I expected it to be. Yeah, amazing. Exactly. You're not googling that beforehand. No, people You're don't not? do that. Okay. Yeah, good stuff. You got another? Uh, oh no, it's on my turn, isn't it? It's your turn. It's from Matt Cronin who says hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Hey, guys, I was recently reading DC's The Flintstones comic from 2016, and it's honestly one of the funniest books I've ever read. Please consider it for the book club or Caravan of Garbage sometimes. Thanks for being my favorite podcast. You're welcome. Happy to do it. Uh, that's interesting. I've heard that's very yeah. good. Yeah. Mm. Okay. We should at least read it. Yeah. And find out whether that be true. Mm. Terrific. There's, there's all, there, occasionally. I'm going to purchase it right now. You should purchase it right now. Um, DC are doing it, though. That's interesting. Yeah, they they also did because they did a bunch of Hanna Barbera stuff. There's also that, yeah. but they and they and they, of course they did some Warner Brothers stuff because they why, own it. Because why not? Why not? And there was a great. There's a Batman Elmer Fudd. One is it like shot. a realistic looking comic? This yeah, one? yeah, it is. Yeah, what the Swiss? Is this the John Goodman version? No, I don't think so. Do I want to play ten bucks for this? <laughs> I knew, I knew there would be a question about how much it was. Well, if I get Kindle Unlimited, I can read it for free, but that's not really free, is Also, it? I bet you can't get Kindle Unlimited in Australia. I bet it doesn't work. Oh, click on I bet you'll go through every yeah. step of it and you'll get right to the end and you'll be like, and and order, and it'll be like, sorry. But we drained your bank account. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I should read this. Mm. Yeah, maybe I'll buy one and then I'll see how. But then I'll be like, oh, I bought one and now I'm going to buy the pack. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then anyway. you spend $11. Spend $11. Mm. Anyways. But if it's that good, $10 yeah. or $11, doesn't matter, right? I mean, if this, to be fair, was like a, like a really good run of Batman that I'd heard about, I'd just purchase this. But because it's the Flintstones, so I'm right. like, oh, fuck, I don't know, man. I don't like the Flintstones very much. <laughs> well, maybe this will change your tune. Maybe maybe next week I'll show up here and you'll, you'll have a Bam Bam T-shirt on. <laughs> you know? Was he brought in later? Isn't there a new... Yeah, there's a new series called Bedrock coming out. Oh. There's an animated reboot. Is coming. it a gritty reboot? Yeah, Elizabeth Banks is doing it. Oh, yeah. Well, I, f- I had a feeling that like, is this like a Seth MacFarlane thing? And oh. maybe it is also. Anyways, that's terrific. What else, Mason? Uh, here's one more email. This is from Gwen. Yeah. Hi, James and Mason. I've written to you guys before, but I won't be too disappointed if this isn't, isn't read out. I doubt you remember me, but in the episode on the Batman, James incorrectly labelled me as Gwen. Because of this, some people I regularly speak to call me Gwem, which I feel strangely honoured by. I just wanted to sing my praises for what is without a doubt the funniest pod on the internet. You make my dreary hospital appointments much lighter. Speaking of, the leukemia is going pretty well. Sick. I'm currently in maintenance and everything is going as smoothly as possible. Can I be the official trans cancer patient of the podcast? All the best, Gwem. Done and done, Gwem. All right. That's all. I do remember that. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember I also, yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. terrific stuff. Yeah, Glad stay. it's all going well. That's, that's right. great news. That's right. Mm. Best wishes get well soon, Gwem. 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 That's right. It's fun to say Gwem, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a real name also. I hope everybody's looking forward to our new next Spider-Verse podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got one. Stacy. <laughs> I can do one more here from Nathaniel. Auntie Donna have it, the, the most recent episode mm. of their podcast. Uh, Mark has introduced a character called Silly Boy mm. who is the – the most enraging, just horrible combination of attributes you could ever you could ever think of in a comedy character. It's so upsetting. <laughs> really People should have a listen to that. Okay, cool. I uh, just got one more from Nathaniel who says, just binged uh, every episode of Umbrella Academy so I could listen to the latest Week with Flanner podcast. And need to know, did Loki official rip off uh, the commission or its style for the TVA or did the Umbrella books rip off the Marvel books? What's the story there? Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. TVA's been around for a while, right? Yes. I, I rec- look, I, I would guess it's parallel thought just because I think it's it's like the art. Both of them are like the archetypal boring hellish bureaucracy kind yeah. of deal. Like they're, it's that it's that dim fluoro lighting it's that weird off-white, you know, all the yes. plastic is off-white, you know, 
The TVA, I'm mm-hmm. just looking at the dates, the TVA started in 1986. Okay, yeah. But I think, it, yeah, the aesthetic is... Universal, I, guess, I think. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say, like, they have a similar aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I, I think it's very possible that Loki, the showrunners of Loki saw... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Academy yeah. ...and went, oh, that's uh-huh. a cool kind of vibe. Um, but Yeah, but I, I, my guess would be they both had, like, a mood board of boring bureaucracy. Yeah. And just sort of, you know... And went, okay. And they went, okay. Okay. This will do. Let's break for lunch. Great. I was just thinking about that. Just great production design on both of those, I think. Yeah, just, I just completely tremendous. agree. Yeah. yeah. There's very few shows on Netflix now, which we'll talk about in our, in our review of Stranger Things that even bother to like do anything, do something like that now. <laughs> sure. Maybe we're not looking in the right places though. Yeah. Like maybe the show, like isn't there Heartstopper? Isn't that, is that what it's called? Yeah, but not, yeah, Heartstopper's great, but I'm talking about like aesthetically. Yeah, right, Like right. putting in that much money to build sets and yeah, all right, of those right. and, and weird gadgets, et cetera. Yeah. Anyways, Mason, let's get out of here. Let's get the heck out of here, let's James. Let's get the flipping Swiss out of here. Folks, thank you. We've got we to, gotta, you know, we got to be kicked to death in a car park. That's we right. we got no point for that. Yeah. Uh, folks, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing on your podcast catcher of choice. Thank you for telling your friends about it. And thank you for leaving a five-star review uh, because those are the ways in which we get more listeners. And then I read some of them out, don't I? Yeah, and, and then, then they show up and they're yeah. like, oh, they're taking a month off, are they? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But then they get the other content from the secret. The gifts keep giving. How do they content? do it? They do get, they do they're it? so wonderful. <laughs> they're so giving. That's what people would <laughs> That's say. That's what they say. I didn't even look when they pissed themselves and they rolled in it in the car park. Thank you, by the way. Yeah, for you're, all, and you're welcome. <laughs> this one's from Orchid Messenger. It was actually a series of Chinese characters which I then translated. What? You're welcome. Uh, watch Arcane, and this becomes a six-star review. Trust me, it's Hextech. I will watch it. I just haven't. This is, and this is from uh, Ret- Retrock Kid 616 who says, needs more Westworld. Love this podcast. Keep Helps keep me on track on my work week, but not uh, not too much b- delays, but no dismays. Nice to hear opinions on multiple shows slash cinematic universe franchises. Uh, if James and Mason are reading this, thank you for all you do and cheers to more content from great mates. You're very welcome. That's thank terrific. you for the reviews. Uh, that's that, that, good translation. Thank you. Uh, I didn't translate that. Oh, that's that was in English. That was me reading it poorly. Oh, terrific. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. Yes. Uh, you can follow our friend Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at the <gasps> Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at <sighs> Wikipedia Brown. Uh, or on Instagram at Nick Meso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. If you'd like to see some hot, fresh tweets about movies from 2010, yeah, uh, you can follow James there. Uh, you can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Uh, you can also go to the Weekly Planet Pod Reddit and Discord. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck or any amount you wish. You can also go to bigsandwich.co if you're a, a big, big spender. Yeah. Nine US dollars per month. All sorts of bonus podcasts. Huge back catalog. All sorts of uh, movie commentaries. We've and got that Thor videos. movie commentary. We sure do. Things as Ragnarok is next week. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, Ragnarok commentary for, and there's Love and Thunder next week. That's sorry. terrific. Please continue. Good stuff. Yeah. If you want a little preview of what's uh, – or you could just wait. You can yeah, just whatever. Wait a, wait a month and – No, 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 money. Give us the money. <laughs> no, I don't need to wait. Yeah, We're yeah. not going to do it actually. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Better subscribe now. Yeah. <laughs> Unsubscribe any time but don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think about it. Don't even. We've made it very difficult. I actually don't know. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> yeah. You can opt out at any point in time. Um, yeah. I want to see the black phone but I can't because it's not out yet. It's not out till like middle of July I think. Bullshit. <laughs> I hear, it's doing, I hear it's doing very well. Uh, good. Critically and commercially. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you want some T-shirts, you can go to tpublic.com and I search for The t-shirt. Weekly Planet. Uh, thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Arrakam for all our musical themes. Next week, Thor, Love and Thunder, right? God damn. I'm looking forward to seeing where I fall on that because a lot of people are like, it's good, but is it too funny? Mm. Is the tone too clashing? Too clashing. Yeah. Mm. Find out. That's and right. I guess it, how well it does will determine where the uh, Lucasfilm – let him make that Star Wars movie. Yeah, because if it does, if, if it if it does anything less than like a thundering success, as thundering, it were, thundering, uh, they'll fire him. Yep, they'll fire him off that project so fast, and it's his own fault. Yeah, should have made a better movie. That's By right. that I mean a movie that made more money. He should have made a better movie, and he should have also made the TV shows on Disney Plus all <laughs> all better in a way that movie fans like. I agree. Yeah. All right. That's right. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.